Welcome in to game 64 on the 2023 Banana Ball World Tour, loved by our good friends over at Zappos. It's the fourth of six games here from California. We come to you from San Jose, where the party animals were just swept all three games in Rancho Cucamonga, going the way of the Nanners, who now lead the season series 24 games to 22 and have a two-game advantage for the first time in this world tour. As folks move all over this place, you can see that in Excite Ballpark, Josh and I have a very unique vantage point. Josh Chalevsky, Biko Scala, thank you so much for taking some time on a Tuesday night to hang out with us in Banana Land. Boy, the Golden State has treated the Nanners incredibly well, and the party animals will have to turn the tides here over the games tonight, Thursday, and Saturday if they want to change chance to salvage things here in Cali. Yeah, that's exactly right. We saw huge offensive outputs from both squads, but it was the Bananas batting over 400 in the series that really solidified a three-game sweep in Rancho Cucamonga for them. But the Party Animals going back to Dylan Porter on the mound tonight. They're hoping that'll turn the tides here in his home state. Pride of Oakland, California. We are oh so close, just about actually. It is the closest. We will get to Oakland here on our six-game trip throughout the Golden State, which has been all nanners, but the party animals going to Porter, the flame-throwing righty, and we'll see if he can cook up a little Golden State magic. For the nanners, it is going to be Ryan Kellogg, the six-foot-six lefty, coming off seven years of minor league ball in the Chicago Cubs system, and boy, he's been incredible as a reliever, although his one start that he had, four innings, gave up all four runs, the only homer, and the only three sprints he has allowed in his young five-appearance bananas career. Yeah, and you know, you always kind of feel like you have to get maybe a start under your belt before you truly get comfortable, and I kind of think that's what it was for Ryan Kellogg. Overall, in his relief appearances, he has been phenomenal. You talk about no sprints allowed, just a consistent strike thrower. If the Bananas continue to get that in his start today, they will have a chance at a fourth straight win here against the Party Animals. We are going to dig a little bit deeper on the numbers that make this matchup so fascinating tonight, but before then, we are throwing you down to the field because we have have to find out if the first banana tonight is good or if it is rotten. Mr. Young Professor, take it away, my dear friend. Split is romping and stomping. Open the case, Split. Peyton grabbed that banana. And now it is time to peel the banana. Peel that banana, Peyton. There it is. Keep peeling, Peyton. She's doing it at a feverish pace. Keep peeling, Peyton. Keep peeling. Take a bite. Chew it up very good. All right, Peyton. You need to tell us whether that banana is good or if it's rotten. Well, All right, now that we know what kind of night we're gonna have, it's time to kick things into high gear. You know something, folks? Most games start with a first pitch, but not here in Banana Ball. Instead, we start with a first golden banana, and here to throw out the first golden banana is my friend Jim. Say hi to everybody, Jim. Now, here's how it's gonna work. It's gonna be a little different. Jim is gonna need to find this banana somewhere here on the infield, blindfolded, and you're gonna help him, because when he crawls in the right direction, you are gonna cheer. Let me hear you cheer. And when he goes in the wrong direction, you're gonna boo. Let me hear you boo. All right, San Jose knows what to do. Jim, let's mask up. Here we go, get it on just right. We wanna make sure you can't see anything. All right, on all fours, Jim. On your mark, get set, go. Jim is moving carefully. He's done it, ladies and gentlemen. Jim, take that mask off. It's time to pitch it. You're going to go to the Bill Leroy. 
get here on the mound. Let's give him the heater, Jim. Here we go. Boom goes the dynamite. Give it up for Jim and the first golden banana. Banana Nation, I need everyone to get your spear fingers up in the air. Two hands, spear fingers up in the air. Because it is tradition time. A ritual we've been doing since 2016 that has brought immaculate vibes to the bananas. Because fans, keep those spear fingers going, because it is now time to meet tonight's Banana Baby. Amelia, four weeks old, still sleeping in the middle of this. Slightly starting to wake up. A typical waking up ritual for her. Bands, one more time for tonight's Banana Baby, Amelia! Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, please direct your attention to left field. They're the wildest, craziest, sexiest, most outrageous group of animals you'll ever lay your eyes on. And they're here for just one reason, to party. Here come the party animals. Let's meet the starting lineup. Batting leadoff in center field, number six, Reese Hampton. Batting second, the DH, Dalton Cornett. Batting third, right fielder, Tanner Tinder Thomas. Batting fourth, Jake Skoll. Hitting fifth at third base, Bryson Bloomer. Hitting sixth, the catcher, Joe Lytle. The extra hitter batting seventh, Sammy Claycamp. Batting eighth, second baseman, Dustin Paper. Batting ninth at first, Jason Swan. And at shortstop, Chase Aka. From Oakland, California, starting pitcher for the party animals, Dylan Porter. The party animals are managed by Mike Baba Vavasis and Slammin' Sammy Clayton. Ladies and gentlemen, coming to the plate with me right now is some bananas power. His name is Donovan. He is six years old and attempting to hit a home run against these party animals. So make some noise for my friend Donovan. He is facing party animals pitcher Brett Helen. This fight is, is not, not very, very fair, fair. But, but here we, we go. go. Boom! Strike, Strike one. one. Good, Good cut, cut, Donovan. And, and Brett Helton is picking on a six-year-old. Can we hear a boo for Brett Helton? All, right, All right, Donovan, see what you got. got. Boom! That ball's hit at the middle. Brett Helton can't handle it. Bryson Bloomer tackles him. He is going to be safe in first base. Donovan is on his way to second. Make some noise, ladies and gentlemen. Is banana ball and in banana ball we have 10 rules rule number one every inning counts you win the inning you get a point how do you win the inning score more runs than the other team the final inning counts the most where every run counts for a point rule number two we have nine innings or a two-hour time limit unless rule number three if we are tied it will force a one-on-one -on -one showdown tiebreaker one hitter versus one pitcher with one fielder rule number four 
There is no bunting because bunting sucks. If you bunt, you're thrown out of the game. Swing the bat. Rule number five, batters can steal first base. Rule number six, there are no walks in banana ball. Ball four is a sprint. The runner can go as far as they want till all nine fielders touch the ball. Rule number seven, batters may not step outside of the batter's box. If they do, he'll call it a strike. Rule number eight, there are no mound visits. Rule number nine, the banana ball challenge rule. During the game, both teams have the opportunity to challenge an umpire call that they think is close. They can challenge whether a ball is fair or foul, a force or tag play at the plate or at a base, or whether a ball is caught or not. The challenge will be reviewed by our broadcast team, and the decision will be given down to our umpires. And of course, for the first time ever in the history of professional sports, you, the fans, have an opportunity to challenge one play during the game. And again, your fan representative sitting over here behind the party animals dugout, give it up for Cat, who is ready for the fan challenge if it shows itself tonight. And finally, the most fans first rule of them all. San Jose, I hope you brought your gloves tonight, ladies and gentlemen, because if any of you fans catch a foul ball in this game, it counts for an out, and those are the rules of banana ball. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for our traditional banana ball weigh-in. Introducing first, making his way out of the party animals dugout. He's been clanging and banging at every gym from Muscle Beach to San Jose. This man's mustache lifts more muscles than you do. Give it up for player coach Mike Vava. Yeah, he is the heartthrob of Banana Land. Women want him. Men want to be him. Recently, a photograph of his abdominal muscles was commissioned to hang in the halls of the Louvre Museum in France. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Noah Bridges! He comes in this evening at 195 pounds of pure potassium power. And now, home play umpire, Vincent Chapman. It's time to meet the cast of the 2023 Banana Ball World Tour. As the cast and crew parades down the right field line, we bring you back to our broadcast booth that is in the stands here in Excite Ballpark. This is the home of the San Jose Giants, single-A affiliate of the San Francisco Giants. What a beautiful arena for banana ball. But for now, let's take a look back in time at what occurred Saturday night and Sunday afternoon when the Nanners won both of those banana ball games four points to three in very different fashion. They were the weight team on Saturday, once again home on Sunday. Yeah, but we saw a massive offensive performance for the Bananas, especially being that visiting team. You see 18 hits for the Bananas in that ball game. And boy, that's the beauty of Banana Ball. Despite the Bananas with 18 hits, 11 runs through the party animals four. Still a four points to three ball game as close as it can get. And then Sunday again, the Bananas continued to roll offensively with 13 hits. And they rallied in the ninth inning after a go-ahead shot from Mike Babasis. It was Dan Obers, Dakota McFadden, and Eric Jones Jr. rallying off Gary Delano to get the Bananas another walk-off win in the series. Dakota McFadden and Ryan Cox are co-showmen of the night on Sunday as Coxie got his 100th and 101st trick play of the tour in insane achievement. And let's take a look at the team stats across all three ball games in Rancho Cucamonga. 
As you can see, the Nanners' offense was the story. I mean, a 421 team batting average and an OPS north of 1,000. And how about this? Both teams, three home runs. Those six home runs combined between both teams got us to 80 home runs on this year's Banana Ball World Tour. And when you really look at it, talking about this Bananas offense, how do you bat 421 collectively as a team? Well, how about when you look at tonight's lineup, five of the first six guys in the Bananas order tonight batted 400 or better. DR Meadows batting 525 across Rancho Cucamonga. He was two for two in his first two at-bats in all three games. Unbelievable performance by the doctor, a big reason why he was showman of the night on Saturday. And let's transfer in to what our ball game shows for us tonight, our pitching matchup between both of these sides. It is the Oakland, California kid, Dylan Porter, opposed by our resident Canadian, Mr. Ryan Kellogg. Yeah, we've continued to see a little bit of a drop-off in performance for Dylan Porter. What's worth noting here, it's the ball for sprints for Porter. We talk about control issues, but what's more, only two sprints allowed in his last start, but both of them came with runners on base and in scoring position, allowed two of the three walk-offs for Dylan Porter. And for Ryan Kellogg, those three sprints you see on the screen have all come in his first start of the season. If he can just continue to throw strikes, much like he has out of the pen, you've got to feel the Bananas are going to get another good performance from the big lefty. We have an amazing show in store for you tonight from Teal Town. The Bananas and Party Animals facing off in San Jose. We will be giving away not just one, but two pairs of pokers! That will be happening in the seventh inning. We'll have Eric Burns on the broadcast with us. It's going to be an absolute hoot. Thank you so much for watching. Right now, it is time for the full capacity ballpark to get warmed up. We'll throw it down to Jesse Cole and our young fan who will do so just that. Welcome to the field for the fan warm-up, six-year-old Lena. All right, Lena, are you ready to get this crowd fired up? Yes. Okay, I love it. So whatever you do, they're all gonna do, all right? Let's pump this place up, here we go. Oh, we're clapping. Yes, we're bringing it here in San Jose. Oh, we're pumping it up. I like it, there's no roof, but we're still gonna raise it. Keep it going. Oh, all right, we're swaying and jumping, swaying and jumping. I like it. Oh, yes. Oh, a spin move, a spin move. Oh, no, we're still spinning. Jumping jacks. Oh, no. You're getting them loose and warmed up, everybody here. Oh, we're back clapping. We can handle this. Lena, look around. They are fired up because of you. Let's hear it for six-year-old Lena! Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, and potassium enthusiasts from around the world, Tonight, you and thousands of your friends here live, thousands more still watching at home on YouTube, have gathered here to witness something beyond your wildest imagination. From Montana to Savannah, from the Isle of Man to Tokyo, Japan, the Banana Maniacs come from across the globe to witness this. This is not baseball. This is the crucible where the fastest, hungriest, and most entertaining players are forged. This is a game of the fans, by the fans, and for the fans. But this is not your granddad's pastime. This is not just another night at the ballpark. This game is baseball by birth, fruit by name, and an absolute worldwide fan nominon by the grace of God. This is the time for all 3,000 fans here in San Jose to get on your feet and give me your voices. Because this is the greatest show in sports. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Banana Ball. All right, San Jose, let's meet the starting lineup for your Sabrina.
Savannah Bananas. Hitting leadoff, the center fielder number five, DR the Duck Meadows. Batting second, the left fielder, Michael Vitamin D. Batting third, the extra hitter number 19, Dan Ober. Hitting cleanup, first baseman number three, Eric Jones. Batting fifth and coming from the crowd behind home plate, DH Dakota, T. Mac McFadden. Batting sixth at third base, number 18, Danny Hosley. Batting seventh at shortstop, our glove magician, Ryan Cobb. Batting eighth, behind the dish, number one, make some noise for Bill Leroy. Batting ninth in right field, number nine, Noah Boo 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 Bridges. And batting tenth, at second base, the songbird of our generation, Dalton Molden. On the mound for your Savannah Bananas. Give it up for Ryan Kellogg. Your Savannah Bananas are managed by Tyler Gillum and Adam Viro Byron. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing and remove your hats. Here to honor America with the singing of tonight's national anthem, please welcome Cheyenne Milligan. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proud The twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. Take on the 22, 24, and two party animals. After sweeping their arch rivals in Rancho Cucamonga, this is game four of six in California. The only one that will be played here in Excite Ballpark in San Jose. The Bananas are two games better than the party animals for the first time on the entirety of this world tour and they do not want to go back to the domination that was the first few months of this thing at the hands of the party animals. The Nanners defensively from left to right 
in the outfield, Michael Deeb, D.R. Meadows, and Noah Bridges. In the infield, third to first, Danny Hosley, Ryan Cox, Dalton Malden, and Eric Jones, Jr. Bill Leroy is catching, and Ryan Kellogg gets the start on the mound. I will tell you what, it looks so good to finally see 101 trick plays there for Ryan Cox at shortstop. Danny Hosley at third base for the Manas. It's Eric Jones moving back over to first just to keep Dan Oberst fresh as the extra hitter. Here is what the six foot six southpaw has done across five appearances in Banana Land. The entirety of the four runs he gave up was in four innings pitched in his lone start of the tour. Also, all three sprints and the only home run he has allowed. Besides that, five and two thirds scoreless innings of relief. And two of those nine and two thirds innings have been below two minutes for Ryan Kellogg on this year's tour. And man, a 141 ERA plus for the lefty opponents batting 308 against him. And in Rancho game two, this is the guy the Bananas turned to to get them the save in the ball game. And it came with the help of some Ryan Cox defensive wizardry out there. It was a double play, his 99th trick play of the tour at that. The lineup for the bad boys of Banana Land. Reese Hampton, the switch hitting center fielder at the top. Dalton Cornett hitting second. Tanner Thomas moved into the three hole as he is scorching hot. Jake Skull cleaning up. Bryson Bloomer hitting fifth. Joe Lytle catching, hitting sixth. Sam Claycamp, the extra hitter behind him. Dustin Baber, the second baseman, moved up into the eighth spot. Jason Swan at first hitting ninth. And Chase Acuff, the shortstop, will round out the 10 of them. We'll throw it down to Jesse Cole. In Banana Land, we like to do things differently. So tonight, we are going to have a special first pitch that actually counts in the game for a ball or a strike. So fans, let's give a warm welcome to three-time Major League All-Star, two-time World Series champion, and Boston Red Sox Hall of Famer, Kevin Euclid. Those are not boos coming from the folks here in Excite Ballpark. Those are yous. Uke, the Greek god of getting on base. And oh! he just misses That's the inside corner. We will start 1-0 and as the party animals celebrate. But fans, one more time for Kevin Euglis. It will be a 1-0 count on Reese Hampton to start the ball game. Now it's officially time. So on three, I need everyone here to yell, start the clock. One, two, three. Showtime. It's been a while since we had a first pitch that counted. In fact, it was Euclid's Red Sox teammate and former AL MVP Dustin Pedroia, who also fired a ball. That was all the way back in Scottsdale, Arizona. 1-0 count on Reese Hampton, the 12th round draft pick by the Detroit Tigers in 2018. And now it is one and one. Kellogg, seven years of minor league baseball experience in the Chicago Cubs organization. Where did that miss? Vincent Chapman is going to say outside. Awful good from up here. Kellogg certainly wanted it. Now he's behind Hampton, the most dangerous hitter on the tour, three and one. That one stroke to short, backhanded by Ryan Cox. No time to get tricky with Reese Lightning bearing down the line. And a good start for Kellogg. Yeah, kind of surprising that Reese Hampton went after that 3-1 pitch. He's got a ball four sprint in three of his last four games for the Bananas. But that was a good play there from Ryan Cox, not getting tricky with it, making sure to nail the speedy Hampton and get Ryan Kellogg this first out in the ball game. 1-0 count now on Dalton Cornett. Just like Hampton in his second world tour. DH hitting 349 with a 423 on base percentage. That one fouled out of the ballpark, so no chance for a fan to catch it. I'd say less than 1% of this stadium is covered. So a whole lot of chances for the fans to get in the action. DR Meadows tries to make a backflip catch. Comes up empty. Cornette is going to slam the brakes at second. 
with a two base trick play missed. Only the fourth trick play missed in 33 tries for the Doctor. Yeah, you didn't really see DR Meadows move much when the ball was off the bat of Dalton Cornette. It looked like it was lined straight to him, but DR either just whipped or didn't quite position himself exactly right to be able to make that trick play. And that's an early runner in scoring position here for the party animals. Now one of their hottest hitters, Tanner Thomas, blasts that one deep to right center. DR giving chase, runs out of room. It clanks off the excite sign. Ricochets back towards the infield. And Tanner Tinder Thomas trades spots with Dalton Cornett because of the trick play missed. Party Animals ahead by a run, three batters into the ball game. And Tanner Thomas just continued to swing a hot bat here for the Party Animals, dancing it up. Batted 600 across the Rancho Cucamonga series. Three doubles, a triple, four runs batted in. And now he just continues to keep going. Now four doubles across this California series. That's his 43rd run batted in of the tour. Breaks a tie he had with Eric Jones Jr. for the season lead. Number one, Jake Skoll. Now Jake Skoll, cleanup hitter for the party animals. Holding down left field tonight. First round draft pick by the Texas Rangers back in 2010. He was taken 15th overall. Spent five years in their organization, two more in the New York Yankees farm system. Tanner Thomas gets third base on a rare Bill LeRoy pass ball. Two uncharacteristic Bananas defensive miscues early on tonight. And the bender just gets the outside corner. Bill LeRoy with a good frame. Goal hitting 333, a 445 on base percentage. Was in the Atlantic League last summer, as well as Ryan Kellogg. Skola Gastonia Honey Hunter. Kellogg, a wild health genome, playing in Lexington, Kentucky. Where he was actually a teammate and road roommate of Dalton Cornett's, who's already scored. Skull battling here, count still full at three and two. And that's what you're gonna get out of Jake Skull, the man who sees the most pitches per plate appearance of anyone on this year's World Tour. A big part of why he's been the first man to reach 30 ball four sprints on the tour, and he continues to battle off Ryan Kellogg here in the first. We're about to see an eighth pitch of this at bat. Kellogg has two seam and four seam fastballs, a changeup slider and curveball in his arsenal. And he finally gets Skoll on the slider. Really well executed breaking ball there for out number two. And that puts Jake Skoll in a little bit of unfortunate hit territory for him as he's on pace for a record I'm sure he's not thrilled about. Ten straight games now for Jake Skoll with a strikeout. We haven't seen these kind of strikeout numbers for him since the start of this year's World Tour. Yeah, the tour leader in ball four sprints with 30 of them. Just got his 35th K. Two behind Tanner Thomas for the tour high. Nice backdoor curveball to even up the count here to Bryson Bloomer. Move back to the five hole for the Party Animals third baseman. Very dangerous man waiting there. Hitting 353. Fourth best on the season, second best on the Party Animals. That one gets to the bottom of the zone. Two balls and two strikes now. Fouled off. Good defensive swing there by Bloomer. Tanner Thomas still leads off third base. Another 2-2. Popped right side. Eric Jones Jr. hardly has to move a muscle. One unearned run against Ryan Kellogg due to the trick play missed by DR Meadows. Nanners will need one run. Yes, and Jose, we're to tie the inning, two to win it. As you get a look at how the animals got their one run, and 
Mr. Tinder Thomas ends up being stranded on third base. And that's just kind of the nature of the beast sometime. An unfortunate situation there for Kellogg, but nonetheless, leaving that runner stranded at third, really good work, all things considering, as you get a look here at the Party Animals defensive alignment tonight. From left to right in the outfield, Jake Skull, Reese Hampton, and Tanner Thomas. You've already seen them all swing it. Bryson Bloomer at third base. You can say the same for him. Chase Acuff at short, Dustin Baber, their trick play leader with 55 at second, Jason Swan over at first, Joe Lytle handling the catching duties, and Dylan Porter on the bump. Once again, you see Dylan Porter working with Joe Lytle behind the plate. He likes Lytle's framing ability, and if there's one other guy to look at for 100 trick plays on this year's World Tour, keep an eye out on Dustin Baber at 55. He'll have to pick up the pace, but it is very achievable. You take a look at what Dylan Porter has done across 16 69 very nice innings on this tour. He has been above a league average pitcher at a 103 ERA plus, although the ERAs have gone up every month, 3.57 in February and March to 5.26, 5.73, and now 7.45 over the next three months. And that's across three starts here in the month of July, nine and two thirds innings pitch, 12 runs allowed, eight of them earned though, and eight sprints, seven strikeouts. So he's got to get those K's above the ball for sprints to start to be effective, and it's those sprints, specifically with runners in scoring position, that are really hurting Porter lately. Let's take a look at the Nanners lineup. D.R. Meadows, the center fielder at the top. Michael Deeb in left, and Dan Oberst, the extra hitter, all due to swing it here in the first. Eric Jones Jr. cleaning it up. Dakota McFadden, the DH behind him. Then Danny Hosley, Ryan Cox, Bill Leroy, Noah Bridges, and the songbird of our generation, Dalton Molden at second, rounding it out. And it is DR Meadows three straight games with first inning hits. Will he extend that to start the ball game here against Dylan Porter? We're about to find out. Peter is down. Porter out of Oakland, California. And has a four pitch mix, a fastball, curveball, slider, changeup. Quickly behind 2 0 oh. against the scorching hot Meadows. It looks like your question is answered, Josh. This one snagged by Dustin Baber and DR will not make it four straight games with a first inning hit. I think I've got a 10 game streak of broadcasters jinx at the moment. <laughs> I gotta fix that. Looking to set a banana ball record. Now it'll be Michael Deeb in his third world tour, the left fielder, as good as ever. And the stats don't lie. The 319 batting average, 385 on base percentage, 858 OPS. Nothing more you can ask for the pride of Davey, Florida. Especially not after he recorded his first four hit game of the season in game two in Rancho Cucamonga. Nasty change up there from Porter. Fools vitamin D. Now a one two. Same pitch, different result. Good stop by Joe Lytle there. Deeb has only one stolen base on the tour. It was a steal of first. And usually he's a guy who likes to get his at-bats, but that was a good job regardless. Joe Lytle keeping that ball in front. Deeb had no chance to try and take first. Sends that one towards the barbecue tent down the left field line. Good job fighting off the heater. Little usually about... Check that Porter, usually about 90 to 93 with the fastball. Another 2-2. And he gets him. Pulls the string, another devastating changeup. And the party animals an out away from taking the first point available here in San Jose. And this is what you like to see early on in the ball game from Dylan Porter. A good mix of speeds and getting ahead of Michael Deeb early in that count. Critical to his success there. The Bananas pound for pound best hitter on the tour, Dan Oberst, pacing the team with his 366 batting average and 990 OPS. The 149 OPS plus means he is 49% better a hitter than your average banana baller on this tour. And that is still leading all bananas on this year's world tour, but it's a cup, there's a man a couple spots down trying to challenge him and Eric Jones Jr. Inning tying run is aboard. Not Dan's hardest hit ball of the tour, but he will take it, and a devastating base runner is aboard. He's 34 for 38 in his stolen base attempts. Well, the tour leader in home runs with 11 of them, Eric Jones Jr., comes up to the dish. 
And it's Dan Oberst who collected five stolen bases across three games in Rancho Cucamonga, tied with Malachi Mitchell for the most in that span, and he is taking off here. And Joe Lytle is going to gun him down to end the inning. Dylan Porter, three minutes and seven seconds in the first, and the party animals claim the first point in this ball game. Looks like no challenge coming from the bananas nor the fans. Party animals up. One point to zip. And Josh, let's see why Ryan Cox and Dakota McFadden were co-showmen of the afternoon yesterday. Well, two days ago, rather. It was an exciting game. It's Cox getting another showman. This is d first on the tour. And you start here in the fourth. d coming up. My good buddy Biko Scala called the yard card. And how about this? Dakota McDreams coming true. <laughs> that is a long ball in the walk-off for the Bananas. They claim another ball point here early off of Sean Fluke. And man, you talk about d getting fired up. A man who has homered in every single month on this year's World Tour. And boy, got a little bit of an earthquake there. Now in the fifth, it's Ryan Cox with his 100th trick play on the tour. The boys so fired up to go out and congratulate him. And that's not all we saw from Coxy. How about two hits from the glove magician? You see that opposite field hit. And man, he's really lounging in that beach chair and playing some basketball on the diamond. <laughs> And that's five dribbles of a banana ball, buddy. <laughs> now, here in the sixth, Jake Lealios, wild pitch, and Dakota McFadden stealing first base. But that's not all. He's looking for two. Steal of second for McFadden as well. And in the ninth, game on the line. Dan Oberst on first. It is d coming up with the game-tying double. Malachi would pinch run for him and come around to score on an EJ ball four sprint that got the bananas the win. Just a phenomenal and mild stone day for both d -Mac and Ryan Cox. It was Coxie's sixth Showman of the Night Award, which ties him with Danny Hosley for the tour high. In his third world tour, Dakota McFadden's first. How about that for d -Mac? Tough to grab it when you're the everyday DH and not getting chances in the field to make trick plays. And as Joe Lytle Ahead in the count, one ball and no strikes. We welcome in as special a guest in the booth as we have ever had. It is the 22 Bananas head coach, Mr. Eric Burns. Dudes, it is such a pleasure to be here. I have missed each and every one of you. I, I don't even know what to say about that dirt squirrel you got perched <laughs> on your upper lip. Burns, it is, it's an honor to be in the booth with you, man. It's so glorious. It really is. Biko, I, dude, the, I just, I'm having flashbacks of the two of us uh, talking shop in my office at MLB Network about what breakdown to do next and whatever else. So there's ball four. How about that? Only the fourth ball four sprint for Ryan Kellogg in over 10 innings pitched, and that is the ball four sprint defense that you honed these Nanners in on last tour, and it was executed well there. Well, I think it was a combination of everything, right? Because the remnants of what that's become now is something that we saw in the early going, but it was never organized. And so once we perfected it and went over it and practiced it, I, you got to be an absolute burner to try to get the second if they go ahead and toss the ball around the right way. So, Bernsey, when you think back to managing on last year's World Tour, I mean, how different is it leading a banana ball team versus kind of your classic baseball team? It's obviously different. I mean, it's one of those things where... You just, I, I think the biggest phrase that we always say is have a feel, right? Yeah. I would have a feel for the broadcast that we're doing right now and, uh, you know, have a feel for what's going on in the audience in front of us. Have a feel for what's happening with this foul ball that <laughs> I had visions of pulling down and it, it being an out right there. <laughs> there's just, there's so much going on here, uh, but it was one of the more special experiences I've ever had in my life and just really honored and proud as Vincent Chapman's about to get nasty down there with a the strike three call. How about this? The 263rd straight sold out bananas game and the crowd is gifted free donuts courtesy of Duncan. It's a beautiful sight. Yep, and there they go. <laughs> 
suck them. I mean, are they glazed? Are they jelly? What are they? They I know they got all different kinds. <laughs> you got some cinnamon sugar. You got some blueberry. You know, whatever variation of munchkin you like, Fernsey, they've got it. So people using their gloves to try and ascertain the sweet treats. Uh, throw down to second. And oh! Final. What a pop slide. He evades the tag from Dalton Malden. He's in there. And Pico, you're right. What a pop slide. I feel like he came up short, paused a little bit, and then accelerated through it. That was incredible. Let's take it another look here. I guess he just popped off to the left, and he's safe, and now you got the little leprechaun up. How <laughs> about that? So, Lytle now six for seven in his stolen base attempts. It was the most bizarre of them all. Justin Baber, the second baseman, lines that one into center field. Lytle getting the wave around third. Throw from DR Meadows comes into second. And the party animals up one in the all-important points category now lead the second inning by a run. And here we go, boys. I mean, let's dance with them. Oh, you, you know this one, Bertie? No, but it just looks fun. <laughs> Shake it. Woo! This is so incredible watching from this side of the fence because this is the first time in my life I've taken in a banana ball game I, from the stands, obviously. And uh, the energy, the electricity that radiates throughout this place, and it doesn't just start at 7 o'clock when the game begins. It literally is 5.30 when the gates open, and it just doesn't stop. Now Jason Swan will swing it, the first baseman. Five-year man out of Georgia Southern in his first world tour. Hitting 248, but a 362 on base percentage. And kudos to both of you guys with all the numbers. I, it's, you know, you sent me the research packet <laughs> beforehand, which obviously I don't have laid out in front of me like you two pros do. Right. But just to catch up and understand where guys are and the fact that you're doing WRC Plus and uh, OPS Plus, I, it, it's incredible. I, and I, you know, that's, that's the beauty of it. As you see Banana Ball expand, I think these numbers to the casual fan probably don't mean a whole lot. But to somebody like myself, even, who's been on the coaching side of things already, hey, those matter to me, man. Like, I wish we had more of that when we went through the tour last season. I mean, as much as we love the show aspect of Banana Ball, I mean, these numbers just add so much legitimacy to the game, which is really what it's all about for me. I, I love it because you're owning it, right? You're not even shying away from it. You, you don't care about the people dancing. You don't care about the <laughs> shenanigans. You don't care about the antics as his balls are driven to deep left field and hauled in. No problem. That deep out there? Yes, sir. So let's see if we get a banana walk off here in the bottom of the second. We are going to get loud here. We got a little crowd sing off tonight. And, and Bernsey, I'm in the same boat as you as you were coaching all of the 14 games on last year's World Tour. Very different than now us being in game 64. This is the 94th banana ball game of all time. I have broadcast all of them. It's the first time I am here in the stands. And it's a magical experience, man. Really? Yes. I have broadcast a lot of Bananas games, baseball, in the Coastal Plain League out in the stands. I've never been out in the elements like this for Banana Ball. Wow. I mean, I would think that there's no other place to do it from now on. Couldn't agree more. I would never want to be in that booth. It, it's version one of Bananas in the Bleachers. That's what we'll call it from here on out. You can't keep Biko in a booth. You just can't do it. Bro, you were meant to be out in the wild. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. I, I mean, you guys think you guys should be setting up on the field. Yes. Can't cage the animals. No. Especially the, the furry Murray it's on gotta the other eat. It's got to eat. Now, speaking of that, Birdsy, you had an absolutely terrific mustache last year. You're clean shaven now. What happened? I, so what happened is, ironically, I was in Fresno for a baseball tournament. Right. Where we'll be Thursday. Yeah. And I, I drank, uh, like, way too much tequila. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The, the night before, I woke up, and I'm like, well, I, I need to shave because the sides of my mustache were going into my mouth. So I shaved this side, and this side. I was trying to trim it up, and pretty soon, I had shaved too much, and then I shaved this side, and then I started to yeah. resemble... Uh, a, a, a leader back uh, in the yes, day. Correct. Charlie Chaplin. That's not even worse. Yes, Charlie Chaplin. 
And I'm like, I can't be bumping around looking like this guy. No. Absolutely not. No. So I took the rest of it down, and it's been gone ever since. Probably a two, three months now. So it just left. Right. <laughs> yeah, I, I miss it. Oh, <laughs> you feel naked without it, or I at first, yeah, I, yeah. I, I really did. I, it just you don't realize, you know how how gross it is until you get rid of it. <laughs> Fascinating. <laughs> yeah, Josh is on about a year and two months, three months now with the mustache here. Yeah, something like that. It's pretty good work by you. Thank you. I've been keeping track of it. Eric Jones Jr. will lead it off. It's 4-5-6 for the Nanners here in the bottom of the second. Dakota McFadden on deck. Danny Hosley in the hole. And a cut and a miss on the heater from Porter. So EJ, one of the best hitters, I think, in Banana Land. Correct. And he goes down swinging on a nasty curveball there from Dylan Porter. As EJ chatting with Joe Lytle about that, trying to figure out what pitch it was. Well, you know what's funny is that you've seen Dylan Porter, who's really jacked up tonight based on the fact that he's from here. Right. He's from Oakland, right? Yeah. So he's having an opportunity to go ahead and pitch in front of the home fan. We have a Dylan Porter fan club. <laughs> like right there in front of us. That's just awesome. And here's the pep band uh, bringing Dakota to the plate. How about that? You uh, love to see it. Yeah, man. It's just weird. Oh, man. No other way to put it. I mean, that's and that's what's so beautiful about some of this stuff is that it's just. I, I, I don't mean weird in a demeaning sense. I say weird in a beautiful way. Uh, very awkward at times. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Kind of like the furry Murray mustache. <laughs> I'll tell you, Dylan Porter, as happy as anybody that you didn't keep it shortened up at front. One of our two Jewish players in Banana Land. Really? Alongside Brandon Sherman. Both party animals. Nice. I mean, we had one of the uh, all-time great Jewish players throw out the first pitch tonight in Kevin Euclid. We hope to have him in the booth later tonight. Uke was actually Team Israel's hitting coach the past WBC. Of really? course, thanks to thanks to Nate Fish, your predecessor, the first ever Bananas premier team coach, first man to coach the Nanners in Banana Ball, the self-proclaimed king of Jewish baseball. Yep, and you know what? <laughs> I've heard nothing but fantastic things. I want that. Oh, I'm now hungry. I'm, if we catch one, they're out, right? Correct. Oh, no oh. doubt. Yes. We're going to log our names in the record books. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That'd be a hell of a moment. Another payoff to Dakota McFadden, and he goes down swinging on the heater. So now you see two of your hitters from last year's tour that Dylan Porter has slain here in the second inning. Well, they're two of our better hitters, too. So yes. I, this isn't about what the hitters are doing right now. For me, it's more about what Dylan Porter is doing on the mound. And I don't know if he's using any artificial substance here tonight. I'm going to get him a little extra grip on the ball. Maybe some sandpaper. Why not, though? Hometown kit. I was yeah. that one slider. It, 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 you know, who was it that looked back? Uh, it wasn't Dakota, but EJ. EJ. EJ looked back. He's like, what is that? Oh, that ball's crunched. Danny Hosley a little too much launch angle. That's warning track power. And Dylan Porter has earned points in both his innings on the bump tonight. Stranded a hitter in the first. He's faced the minimum thanks to the caught stealing. Party Animals up two points to nothing. Two innings into this ball game. And another good MPI for Porter as well. We saw 3.07 in the first. Now two minutes and 29 seconds there for the righty. What is the all-time MPI record, boys? Minute? One minute and 11 yeah. seconds. Who was it? Brett Helton. Came in Durham, North Carolina. Was it... Three first pitches? Have we seen that yet? We have not seen a three pitch inning. No. In fact, I couldn't tell you. Do you know how many pitches Brett Helton's record breaking inning was? Five. Yes. I was just saying, it can't be much more than five. A minute and 11 seconds. So, how are you boys enjoying San Jose? This is my hometown. You know that, right? Now, yes. Not specifically San Jose, right. but the San Francisco Bay Area. 100%. Man, it's awesome. I mean, I, I almost made it up here. I ended up uh, stopping in Monterey, which was beautiful. That's where I hunkered down last night. But, I mean, the weather's great. Love the palm trees, the mountains. I'm all in. It is uh, a crowd that is obviously into it as well. Uh, Jesse was saying it's obviously one of the smaller crowds that you guys have played in front of this year. Right. But 
my favorite spot from last season during the world tour that we went through right. was actually Daytona. Yes. And the reason why is because they're right on top of you. Intimate. Intimate. This is super intimate. And because we're the heart of the Silicon Valley, I also suggested to Jesse that there's a chance that the cumulative net worth <laughs> of the audience here tonight yeah. will be higher than the next two cities we go into. But look out for the farmers in Fresno, and then Sachs got a lot of trans transplants that is uh, pretty close to Lake Tahoe, too. Right, so. and, and we go from 4,000 to 14,000 fans yeah. in Sacramento. So it, you know, you, you, get a, you get a good sample size there. Top of the order for the party animals here in the top of the third. Reese Hampton was your center fielder. You had him in the rover position last year. And boy, what a blessing it is to have him on your team. Huh? He grounded out to short his first time. He is now one for two. Well, this is too easy for him. I mean, he's hitting right-handed, which yes. you know, typically a uh, switch hitter is going to be much better from the left side. He's hitting in the shadows, which it doesn't make it easy at all. And he continues to do what he's been doing ever since I met him. I sent a text message last year, guys, to A.J. Hinch, the manager of the Detroit Tigers. They released Reese Hampton a couple of years ago. And I said, yo, dude, I, I have a guy that is legit, was in your organization, is no longer in your organization. The only thing I could say is that I legitimately think, as here we get the 3-2-2, yeah, how about this? Good to see. Speaking of guy with minor league experience, Kellogg, seven years in the Chicago Cubs organization, and all six feet and six inches of him moving it and grooving it here. Grooving it. He's figured it out. Woo! And gets a nice. strike out of it. That was beautiful. Well done, 3 2 2. So is that third inning, second batter, second pitch? Nailed it. So, back to Riso. So I reached out to AJ Hinch about potentially. Rethinking yeah. the decision, I, I'm like, I truly believe, and I, I wasn't, I didn't say he's going to be a big league all-star or even a superstar. I said he's a legit fourth outfielder candidate. Right. A switch hitter can run the ball down as well as just about anybody I've ever played with. Yes. And so long as he can get on base, come up with some, like, I, I think he has the ability. And, uh, well, he's still here. So, obviously, my word didn't do all that much. <laughs> well, we appreciate the effort as Noah Bridges grabs that fly ball in right from Dalton Cornett, who reached on a trick play his first time, came around and scored. And now it'll be Tanner Thomas, RBI double. Off the excite sign in right center field, his first time was stranded on third. Reason why the party animals claimed a point in the first inning. Yeah, this is a guy that shocked me a little bit because you see the 104 OPS+. plus. I would have pegged him as a guy that was going to be closer to 140. Yeah. I, and once again, I just, what do I see the first time I come here? It's a ball off the excite side. <laughs> like he's one of the, I think he's one of the better hitters here. Probably hasn't completely fulfilled, uh, I think, his potential. I think, I think he's that good. The kid from Virginia Tech. Nailed it. Former D1 freaking stud. Fact. I mean, he's come on extremely strong here in July. Six ball four sprints coming into this month, and he's got five already here in July. So he's nearly doubling that total, and that's why you've seen part of that rise in OPS Plus for him. You're, you're right. You have to have patience, right? It starts with patience and swinging the, the right pitches. That's what I tell our boys that let them play. Like, look, first and foremost, you guys know what you got to do? You got to get a good pitch to hit. If you don't get a good pitch to hit, nothing else matters. Well, that is what he has done more than anyone on the tour. That's his 38th strikeout. Kellogg gets, Kellogg gets him on the heater. His fourth punch out of the night. But Tanner Thomas, I mean, he's turning it on. And Rancho Cucamonga went six for 10 with a triple and three doubles. Of course, because I was watching that series. Right. He killed it when we were in Kansas City last year on the extended tour. Yes. And I, that's when I really got to see him consistently in the Bananas lineup, and I was thoroughly impressed. Well, another guy that has done nothing but thoroughly impressed throughout his time in Banana Land, the 15th overall draft pick from 2010, Jake Skoll. He struck out swinging his first time. I thought so. Sing along really loud, y'all. But his eight homers, third most on the tour. His five triples lead everybody, his 16 doubles, second to only Reese Hampton.
He breaks? Yeah. Uh, look, look, this is a guy that has as much, if not more, talent than anybody here. He was a 15th overall draft pick, like you said, Biko. And uh, the fact that he's fully embraced this now. He's embraced his role. He's embraced the party animals. Uh, he's a stud. No other way to put it. He loves the game, and he's a student of the game. And I saw him out there in the outfield earlier today when everyone's figuring out dances and this and that, and dude's hitting. Yes. And he's hitting his little wiffle balls that spit out of a machine at like 90 miles per hour. That's just <laughs> a, a, a master of his craft. I bet he, with, he had that pitch back, the little hanging breaking oh ball. Oh, my gosh. Front door bender steals a strike. 2-2 two -two coming with Hampton leading off second and two outs. Good take there on the slider down and away. So what's your guys' favorite city so far? Whoa. Phoenix. I was a big Phoenix oh, fan. Dude. That one called strike three. Skoll thought he had his tour leading 31st sprint. Right, Instead, he's been struck out for the second time tonight. To and the party animals the are kept off the board Kevin. for the first time this evening. Anders just need one run in the bottom half of this inning to cut the party animals lead in points in half. I think when I think of favorite city, I've got to go with Nashville. Had a great time up there. The ballpark was tremendous. The ballpark or the bars? <laughs> Both. I, how have you guys done? Have you guys gone into these cities and treated them properly? I would say a majority of them. Sometimes you, you start to get underwater, and, and Josh, as the reason why we have OPS Plus and WRC Plus and this and that, every number under the sun, uh, sometimes he has to hunker down and, you know, give his computer all of his attention. But, yeah, when we're out there, we're, we're moving it and grooving it like the Banana Band is right now. Now, are you still traveling via the trucks? No. Because you were doing that last year. No, I'm first class now. No, I'm not actually first class. I'm business class. But I've been uh, traveling around all over the place via the planes and buses whenever possible. How about Jesse? Look at Jesse. Look at Jesse. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. <laughs> almost oh, knocks my laptop too good. down. It's too good. Oh, Jesse! Hey, <laughs> uh, Jesse! I love it. Look at this guy. Fantastic, man. <laughs> like, you just can't beat the juice here, dude. You just can't. I, you feel it. Well, 11 years in the show, another 11 years at MLB Network. I mean, you've been a part of, uh, you know, countless ESPN college baseball broadcasts, this and that. What is the atmosphere in Banana Land, Banana Land like compared to everywhere where else you've traveled in the baseball world? It's the best I've ever seen, and it's not even close. And that's why it's taken the world by storm. It's as simple as that. There is no better atmosphere in baseball. The only thing I can compare it to is playoff baseball. Right. And in intense moments of the game. But it's almost like there are no down moments of these games. Right. Even when the games aren't great, it just still has a way to, to figure itself out. And I you know, whether it's obviously Shark or I, either one of the teams with the dances, Jesse doing his thing, and you, you're constantly holding yourself to this standard of when I'm here, I'm on. And uh, kudos to all of you guys, uh, honestly. But on both sides, party on bananas is Ryan Cox gets a walk right there. Let's see if they can execute the ball before he drops it. Here we go. Now you know he can get there. Once he drops it, no chance. That boy. So Cox comes in, slides in a second. Pico, sorry for taking your job. That's okay. No, no, no. Step in here. I mean, you are masterful at it. That is Coxie's 12th ball four sprint on the tour compared to 11 strikeouts. And that was a professional at bat. All of the pitches were awful close until ball four. And give Cox some credit because it wasn't like this is a guy that came straight from college and jumped into banana ball. No, he went home, he stopped playing for like eight years and was giving lessons and coaching travel ball. Yes. And then he comes back and he had the glove. Like no one ever questioned that. But even last year, Ball driven deep. It's going to be over his head. Is it out? See ya. Oh, Bill Boy! His first home run on the 2023 Banana Ball World Tour. It walks off.
off the third inning, a two-run blast. Party Animals leads cut in half in one fell swoop. How about that from Bill Leroy? We have continued to hear from his battery mate, Kyle Lewis, a guy who has been messing with a leg kick, and we've seen more hits this month than all of June. This one, the biggest of the season for Mr. Leroy. This is a guy that I used to chuck tennis balls at as hard as I can to get him right, to get him to shorten his swing. Endless hours in the batting cages. I'm so freaking proud of him because when I looked at his slugging the other day, I was like, damn, man, we got to jack that up. Come on, Bill. The OBP was fine, but the slugging percentage was dog doo-doo. And here he goes. Ding, dong, donkey, kong. See ya, walk off. Unbelievable. He saw him do it twice last year. He had a home run off Sammy Clay Camp in Grayson Stadium. He saw him him hit a ball that's still traveling in Kansas City for a three-run homer that tied the inning at four runs apiece at that point. But boy, it took 64 games for his first tater tot here in 2023. Just awesome, man. Just awesome. And we go right from that to a dizzy relay race. Yeah, so I one of these the other night in San Bernardino. Yeah got really uh, squirrely. Yeah. Well, the thing is, the dads on third base are spinning the entire time, so once you get to them, there's no doubt in my mind they will both go down. Yeah, the one the one guy, as you can see, is trying to pace himself. The other guy's already down. Oh, shit. <laughs> Welcome to YouTube. Luckily, the FCC is not watching this. Yeah, I, 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 apparently, I've just implemented No Filter Network, which I'm so used to calling games on. <laughs> but he went down and went down hard, so there was reason for me saying that. Correct. Like, this dude's not going to make it off third. Here we go. Uh-oh. Oh! Whoa! Earthquake! Whoa! Hey, somebody help him off the field. Oh, he's still going. Somebody help him off the field. He's going to finish the race, Burnsy. Yeah! That's the heart of a champion right there. <laughs> The Dizzy Relay Race never, and I mean never, disappoints. One of the most incredible things that I've seen. I, I, honestly, like, did you see the way he went down? Can we get a, a slow-mo expo replay of that at some point? I I hate to say it. Well, I, no, I don't hate to say it. This is truth here. But it's a good thing that he's uh, so robust. Correct. Because when he landed, he was going to face plant. Right. But his belly got in the way. Yeah. And it saved him from actually taking a digger. <laughs> Out of the dirt. He was he was prepared for this moment. He's been preparing his whole life. Oh boy. Party animals lead two points to one as we begin the fourth inning. Five, six, and seven for the bad boys in Banana Land. 1-0 count on Bryson Bloomer. And Vincent Chapman calls time. He's dusting off home plate. He is throwing away his mask and clicker, and he is shaking that derriere like only he can. There it goes. Wow. You've had some amazing commentary of Vincent's dances on your Instagram. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, Vince is a really one of a kind. Yes. And what he has to endure on both sides, <laughs> being the home plate umpire just mm -hmm. about every single night. I, it's almost like that dancing is his relief and his way to just let go of all the jabs that he's getting from the left and the right, from the party nose and the bananas. So good on Vince. And I, I've never, ever seen a man, I would say, who was his size, shake it like that because he has slender down a bunch. Gosh. Bill Lee hiding behind Matt Wolf's rodeo barrel over there. Almost just got taken out by Bryson Bloomer. And I love this because this is a beauty of Banana Land. There's Bill Lee, like you said, hiding behind the rodeo barrel. <laughs> like just, that's Bill Lee. Correct. Bill freaking Lee, Red Sox Hall of Famer. Right. The elder statesman of Banana Land, as we call him sometimes. <laughs> Bernsey, is there anything from last year's World Tour or just any of the time you've spent around Bill that you've learned from that man? Anything. <laughs> Everything. Right. Life. I spent many nights with him. I 
sipping adult be beverages and right, a little tequila. talking baseball and really just talking life. And he's one of the most beautiful human beings I've ever met in my life. Yes. Simple as that. Joe Lytle skies this one to shallow center. D.R. Meadows was playing him deep, and he catches that one on his knees. Ryan Cox avoids him at the last second. Two down for Ryan Kellogg, who has six strikeouts and now has retired five straight. Yeah, it was really surprising to see Ryan Cox, who was trying to wave off D.R. Meadows and make that catch. Really wise for Cox at the last second to get away from that ball, let D.R. take it, even though he had to go down to a knee. And I would say of any of the Bananas players, Ryan Cox has the best feel of all of them. Knowing where his guys are going to be, knowing when to pull off the trick plays, obviously over 100 of them now. Sam Claycamp. Wow. If it's fair, it's gone. It is foul. Saw him hit his first homer of the tour back in Durham over the 32-foot blue monster. He's got the pop. Hit his first banana ball home run back on the One City World Tour in Mobile, Alabama. Oh. At a Hank Aaron Stadium when he was a banana, he'll settle for a base knock. He's one for two on the night. And the fans getting more donuts thrown their way because he struck out looking his first time. Nice piece of hit and shooting it right back up the middle. And how can't you get pumped up for the Irish? <laughs> You've done a jig or two in your life? Oh, yeah, doing it right now. <laughs> Baber with an RBI single, his first time cranks that foul. Can't forget about Sammy Claycamp over at first base. Three for three in his stolen base attempts. Look at this, we got a beer bat tower going on here. Wow. Look at that thing. That's beautiful. I'll reserve my judgment of what I think it looks like. <laughs> I think we can all take a guess. I will not reserve my judgment. I guess I'll reserve sharing my judgment. Correct. 1-1 one, one coming to Baber. That one all the way to the backstop. Second wild pitch of the outing for Kellogg and Clay Camp in scoring position. So one thing you really realize once you're on this side of the net. Yes. Is how critical Shark is to the entire operation with oh the music. Oh my gosh. It's like you're at a club, and so when it stops, it's like, and he has these pauses every now and again! Oh! Chat. Clayton Franklin, our high home cameraman, nearly got taken out. I mean, he gave us just the pinch. He almost had that ball. <laughs> is he safe up there? Oh, yeah, he's perfect. He'll be fine. <laughs> Looks like the wind's picking up. He's getting a lot of sun, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Heater just misses the bottom of the zone. Bill Leroy trying to sell it. Big payoff pitch coming here to Baber. The pride of Babson Park, Florida. At a Daytona State and North Carolina A&T. Under that one, Michael D battling the sun. And we'll grab it for out number three. Back-to-back -back scoreless innings for Ryan Kellogg. He's only allowed one earned run through his four innings on the bump. And the Nanners can tie this game with just one run in the bottom of the fourth. And it's hey baby time here in Banana Land. You know, we were talking about Coxie earlier and how he has ultimate banana ball feel. I couldn't agree more. And you were there. You witnessed his first ever trick play in Golden Park, Columbus, Georgia, as he went bet between the legs and started a double play with Dalton Malden. I, it was a huge play, too. Yeah. And like at a big moment of the game, that was an amazing thing. But I, just the confidence that these guys play with now with the trick plays and everything else is I'm broadcasting and hip thrusting and now I'm spinning around but we can't spin all the way around because yeah. of the cords. We'll get tied up. Hey, hey baby, baby. baby. Who? Ha! Do you think you picked up any uh, dance moves throughout your tour in Banana Land? Yeah, I definitely <laughs> did. I'm not sure how much it actually uh, helped <laughs> my overall dancing ability, but I definitely picked up some dance moves. Just like Vincent, you are one of the most unique dancers I've ever seen in my entire life. Yes. <laughs> very, I, very 
aggressive. Yeah. Like a horde. Turkey jerky. Yes. Hunter Pence-esque. Yes. Perfect. Yeah. It's one, it, you're an effort guy. 100% effort guy. That's how I've lived my life. Correct. And so how you do anything is how you do everything. So when it comes to the hey babies, mine's just going to be a little bit rougher <laughs> than everybody else's. I go hard, boys. Oh, we know that. How many miles you get to run recently? I'm doing 10 to 20 a day. Yeah, that'll play. Just, I, you know, not training for anything specific other than life, but the 10 is the minimum number that I'll get to. I, I've actually stopped counting my miles when you I go run. out and run. You just run. I just run. And so yeah. the, only, the only way I know is that I'll look at my phone later in the day and 40,000 steps is a minimum. Right. So I start there and... Noah Bridges bounces this to Jason Swan. Flip to Dylan Porter in time to get the speedy right fielder for the Nanners. How about that? I threw Noah Bridges and Dalton Molden in the wrong spots in my batting order. Or are they hitting out of order? No, I think I'm wrong. You're incorrect, buddy. Yeah. Biko's wrong. Just lost in the sauce, man. It's okay, a little arrow, arrow, arrow between the two of them. Dylan Porter pulls off the pistol squat as Dalton Molden flies that one to Reese Hampton and center goes oh, under his leg. Wow. 11th the trick play on the tour for Reese. I mean, you're playing with the family jewels there. <laughs> Watch this. Oh, that's dangerous. Well, I I mean, we saw Reese early on in this year's tour, Bernsey, just struggle a little bit with trick plays. But whether it's been between the legs or behind the back, he has really started to hone his craft in terms of the trickery. You have to know what you do well. It's like all of us, right, Biko? Correct. Let's figure out what we do well. Right. We'll still continue to work on our weaknesses, but let's accentuate our strengths, and apparently... That's the strength of reason. Oh, jeez, what happened? Oh, my God. Oh, it was off his face? Bryson Bloomer may have taken that one off the schnoz. Brutal hop. Michael. Official Michael. scoring decision. I think that's a hit. That's a hit. Couldn't agree more. Just wanted it confirmed by our friend who spent 11 years in Major League Baseball. So DR one for two. Now throughout his four games in California, in his first two at-bats, he is seven for eight. Come on. That'll play. One addition to the Nanners. Impossible to replace Reese Hampton in center field. DR is doing as good an impersonation as you could ever imagine. Michael Deeb into shallow left. Jake Skull trotting in. We'll grab it for out number three. Scoreless fourth inning, party animals still lead by a point as the BLA chants break out. <laughs> you know you're in the Bay Area when you hear the BLA chants. At a banana's first party animals game. Yeah, the question is, I gotta believe the party animals are starting to really draw up a following for themselves. They are. I, I, I see a lot more party animals gear. A lot of pink in the crowd as yeah. opposed to last season when it was all yellow. Yeah, you really love to see it. Of course, them now playing their 49th game here today certainly helps that out. As we salute all the military members, past and present, here in Excite Ballpark, and we now have a foam finger on the end of our little bat tower over there. That is incredible. The foam finger on the end of the beer tower. Correct. Just on the tip. Yeah, but it's... It's doing 360s. It's doing 360s, but there's... It, it, it's very floppy. <laughs> yes. A lot of sag. I like, it's almost like oh. disturbing. <laughs> oh, no, that guy's going to touch it. <laughs> Don't touch the tip. No! Incredible. Now, Bernsey, we would keep you up here literally all night long, but we have a very fun plan tonight. Yes. Where you might get down there and do a little guerrilla reporting for us. Yeah, well, I want to basically try to go down there and get some thoughts of the guys and see what sort of information we can relay in real time back up to you guys. And it's been a vision, I think, of all of ours for yes. a while now. Couldn't to agree see more. see how potential in-game interviews could go. All right. Think we should try it tonight? 
Thanks. I'm ready to get in the trenches, my man. Thank you so much, Bernsey. Best of luck out there. I love you guys. I love you too, I, man. All, I am not going to be able to hear you, though. No. You're just free balling it. Follow my lead. I will. <laughs> See ya. Let the master work. <laughs> there goes Bernsey. He'll have to sign an autograph on the way down, of course. He was hanging up here for the first inning with us. And it was autographs galore for him as he was soaking in the scenes. Jason Swan into shallow left, deep lumbering in for out number one. Swanee 0 for 2, a strikeout victim his first time. Yeah, and we've seen Swanee cool up quite a bit since coming out to California, but nonetheless, his nine runs batted in in July is still leading all players in this month. A big reason, seven ball four sprints in that time. You just continue to see the OBP. It's stellar regardless of the batting average right now for Swanee. Chase Acuff plunked on what was a literal back foot breaking ball. That is his seventh hit by pitch on the tour. One behind Bryson Bloomer for the season high. And how about this entrance? Coming in down the first base line. The nickname that I bestowed upon him is finally getting its own music video. Reese Hampton doing a little Reese Lightning. It's a beautiful sight. Feels like I'm watching Greece. Spot on. Just <laughs> spot on. <laughs> and Delano, the perfect man to be driving the John Deere tractor here. You think they even gave anybody else an opportunity to drive it? Or right. you think they just kind of went and said, ah, Delano will do it? Yes. The latter. Reese 18 for 23 in his stolen base attempts, tied with Bloomer for the team lead. That bender gets the bottom of the zone. Reese disagrees with the call made by, by Vincent Chapman. Great frame by Bill Leroy. And now the count one and two. Great to have Reggie Liggins on board. Umpiring down the first baseline. Randy Voss. Out on the base pads as well. Three-man crew tonight. And fastball. Great execution by Kellogg. He has seven strikeouts now. And speaking with another of our statistical savants, Mikey O'Connor, Ryan Kellogg threw his first six strikeouts in this game, started only one of those batters with a first pitch strike. How about that? You just continue to see, even though Kellogg falling by an early in counts, racking, out, racking up these punch outs. It's a mind boggling statistic. Good work, Mikey. Shout out our entire control room. Crew, three hours in the future on the other side of the country. Holding it down, giving you all the camera cuts, the graphics you see, the replays, the sound all coming from Savannah, Georgia, as Dalton Cornette just barely sneaks that one out of the ballpark. Fans were gonna have to try and rob that one to make a play. You put run, one more row of stands up here in Excite Ballpark, and that's a, that's a fan caught foul ball right there. Maybe get another 100 people in here, go from 42 to 4,300. Heater behind the back of DC3, and he still has not fully gotten used to that, especially when it's an 0-2 count. Tour leader in being fooled by the behind the back pitch. There goes Aka. Perfect pitch to steal on. He is now 11 for 14. In his attempts at swiping bags on the tour, he's in scoring position for a 2-2 pitch with two down here to Cornette. And he fouls it off. Cornette and Kellogg teammates on the Wild Health Genomes last summer in the Atlantic League. Room together on the road and have had some great battles here on the 23 tour. Yeah, and we've seen Dalton Cornette come up the victory.
Monster in most of these matches early, but it was Ryan Kellogg getting him to hit into a key double play as this one is going to sneak under the glove of Ryan Cox and it's A Cup. The stolen base ends up paying off as the party animals strike here in the fifth. It is a very rare error from the glove magician. Misjudge the hop and the party animals will capitalize with their third run of the ball game as they lead two to one in the all important points category and will dance their way all the way back into their dugout. Only Cox's 10th error on the tour. Pretty impressive when he's played in all 64 games and has 101 trick plays and 107 tries. And you know, that's just kind of sweet justice in a way for, for Dalton Cornett as Tanner Thomas rolls this one into center field. Considering the incredible play Cox made to double up Ryan Cornett or Dalton Cornett and end game two in Rancho Cucamonga with a trick play, no less, then being able to get that one past Cox on an air. You know, everything works out in the end in Banana Ball. Tanner Thomas, two for three. An RBI double in the first. After striking out in the third, he adds a single to the ledger, and Michael D positioned perfectly for the line drive from Jake Skoll, who had struck out swinging and looking tonight. Party Animals get their third run. Two of them have been unearned for Ryan Kellogg as you get a look at Mr. Kellogg dicing up the Party Animals tonight. This is fantastic. Thank you so much. Oh, thank fires you. Us thank up. you very much. All right. You're the man, Dylan Porter's dad. So great to see you. Awesome sign as well. Yeah, got to get some party animal love. Could not agree more. Yeah. Got to show it. Show it to the. Yeah, we got the camera right there. Yeah. Show the sign. Yeah. That's what we're talking about. And what a great intro to some churros, which come highly advertised. Oh my goodness. Here in Excite Ballpark. Look this at is, this jobber. This is the largest churro I've seen in my entire life. This is one of the ballpark snacks I'm quite mm. excited for. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, are you kidding me? It was amazing. Wow. Final Lewis. Have a churro, man. Mmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. These trolls are no joke. Now, I am a churro connoisseur. I take my churros very seriously. This is an incredible churro. I am giving it an 8.7 out of 10 on the churro scale. Wow, only an 8.7? What's missing for you? I like cream inside. Or I like a little chocolate or something to dip on. Okay, fair enough. I'm going 9.3 on my churro. Mm-hmm. Dan Obers, taking off, and he has stolen first base. He takes sole possession of the tour lead and steals a first base. That's his fifth on the tour. Yeah, get after it. Whoa! That was a good bite you got there, chat. Yeah, and we saw a great field from Dan Oberst in the ninth inning of game three in Rancho Cucamonga. A ball getting away with Oberst down 0-2 against Garrett Delano. Ended up taking off, getting first base, and coming around to score the game-tying point in that ball game. And then eventually, the Bananas scored one more to walk off the party animals and sweep Rancho. Yeah, I gotta, well, first I just wanna say thank you guys for having me up here. I mean, this is- Our pleasure. The most beautiful outdoor booth I've ever seen. We've got planes flying, mm. mountains in the background, palm mm. trees, everything you could really ask for. And just from a, from a churro perspective, wow. I think churros are best judged and graded mm -hmm. naturally by themselves. No dipping, no, no cream filling. Okay. No ice cream. And with that being said, 
I'm going 9-2. I'm going right below Josh's score. I mean, it's airy. It's crispy. Mm -hmm. It's fluffy. Mm -hmm. It's got the right amount of cinnamon. It doesn't overpower you. Right. It would be phenomenal with a glass of milk. Mm. And I could, I mean, I could be having another bite. You know what? You guys have turned me when it comes to a pure churro. Mm -hmm. Forget the strawberry. Forget the caramel. Forget the chocolate sauce. This is a 9.6. Yeah, that bite I just... Wow, you've you seen the light. Jumped. Wow. I've raised it 0.9. It's a San Jose it, miracle. I mean, it reminds me a lot of Cinnamon Toast Crunch, which mm. is my favorite cereal. Right. As we know that I wanted to take that in my cereal draft, and I don't mean to hurt you guys' feelings, but I had the best cereal draft when we drafted. <laughs> well, that's up for debate, but... I mean, we debated it with the people, and they voted for me to win, so I won, and I had the best draft. That's, that's really cool, Kyle. Thanks for that. Do you want to fight? We've been doing so good in Not California. Not really. I, I did do those stats for you, you know. I'm going to steal some of this water. Yeah, go crazy. Yeah, you know, the thing is with this churro, the more I eat it, the more I love it, and that's why it just keeps getting higher and higher on my rating. That's a high... That That's a... That's just a testament of the of the churro. Mm. Wow. I can't stop. And I've never seen a larger churro in my entire life, not even close. Now, are these in-house churros or oh, yeah. from the stadium? Mm. Good stuff. You want autograph? We got an autograph coming here, Kyle. Little hat signature going. Payoff pitch coming to Eric Jones Jr. Dan Obers trying to time Dylan Porter. Now he takes off. This ball blasted down the right field line. Tanner Thomas tracks it down. Dan trying to scamper back to first. Throw! Just in time! Oh, magnificent double play turned by Tanner Tinder Thomas. And Dan Oberst asking for the fan challenge, and we're going to get it. The time is nigh, Josh. I gotta fix my hair now that everyone's gonna turn and look at us. I mean, I got a knack for being up here when these things go off. You're kidding me. Let me get out of your boys' way. You guys handle the business. Okay. I'm not allowed to have a say in this. Zach, <laughs> Zach Frangelo and Vincent Chapman getting the Riedel headsets on. And our folks in the control room are gonna give us the replay. What do we got, folks? Call stands. Yeah. I think that call stands. I, I'm off the top of my head. I'm seeing nothing to overturn this, and it looked from our vantage point as an out as well. Yes, yep. he's out. Okay, and there is our first challenge in San Jose. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. <laughs> I mean, I, I get that the fans want their calls to be overturned, but how could you ever dream that that was being overturned? Yeah, I, I, I saw. I feel like we all got a pretty good vantage point of it up here. I don't think that, I don't know if the umpire celebration was on live camera, but they just did a, they kind of mashed the head of Vincent like a, like one of those little arcade games where you have the soccer bopper thing and you right. hit down the, the groundhog. What is it? Not a groundhog. Whack-a-mole. Whack-a-mole. They treated him like, and every time he got lower, that was really good. I can really appreciate that. Well, the steal of first base is eliminated on your everyday 9-3 double play. And again, Dan Obers was off and running on that pitch, really thought that that ball was already going to crash down. And it was Tanner Thomas who kind of fell asleep for a split second before realizing Dan was stuck at second base. But really, a tremendous throw from Tanner to be able to get that double play there. And on the catch, shades of his game-winning catch, night one in Akron, Ohio. Josh trying to tell me it was night two up. I'll go to my deathbed swearing it was night one as Dakota McFadden, two batters after Dan Obers, now ties him for the tour lead with his fifth steal of first base. And Josh, you've seen the light. Yeah, I don't I don't want you guys to fight. My turn to start seeing yeah. the light around here. I'm in the middle of you guys. It was a miracle. And I will, I'll keep you guys on your respected side of the booth. I don't want to see anybody fighting as Malachi Mitchell's going to take over on first base for... Dakota McFadden, how was it having um, the old skipper Eric Burns up here? Incredible, as per yeah. usual. Really good stuff. Really good to see 
Billy bombs go big fly. I had to have to attest that to to Eric Burns. I mean, he hasn't he hasn't really sniffed much of a home run this tour. And then first Eric Burns first game back in the stadium and he's cranking one out his first at bat. I know that he had uh, he spent some time with Dan Oberst in the cage today. Really worked on some back foot stuff, his loading and really trying to load into the ground versus gaining ground towards the pitcher and. Saw one pitch, and that's all he needed. There goes Malachi Mitchell. Joe Lytle from his knees nearly throws him out. He's already gunned down Dan Oberst tonight. But Malachi, the potential inning-tying run now in scoring position. Guy who was 11 for 15 in stolen base attempts on last year's tour. And is now 60, check that, 56 for 58 here in 2023. Some other good notes from the dugout that I've noticed. I mean, it was a great outing by Kellogg. I'm pretty sure we're going to have a new arm to start the, the top of the six for the bananas. Danny Hosley, some pop the opposite way. Tanner Thomas can't get to this one. One hop off the wall. Flash the kid scores easily. And Hosley sliding into second, now representing the inning winning run. As his 13th double tied for the team lead and his 36th run driven in on the tour. And Danny Hosley has been the best hitter with runners in scoring position on the bananas, batting 341. He comes up yet again, and his ninth hit as well to the opposite field. Great piece of hitting there by Danny Hosley to tie this inning up. <laughs> This walk up from Ryan Cox and all of your teammates here, Cowboy Kyle. That is one heck of a walk up to the dish. You guys are going to go right through them. Yeah, they're going to take it all the way to the dugout. <laughs> they're going to see a pitch. I was supposed to be one of the front guys in this uh, this walkout, but oops. Well, listen, it's they, tough. They, they, they did pretty well, I would say. On their own. Tough when you're needed in two places at once. We've got a horde of children here trying to get Kyle's autograph. Eight of them is. All the Nanners sprint back to their dugout. Ryan had a two-base sprint his first time. Scored the inning-winning run in the third. Can't catch up to the heater there behind 0-2. No one's got a marker up here except for Josh Tolevsky and Kyle in his back pocket. You're requesting markers when you had one on your person? Well, I mean, look at the look at the print on yeah, that. Yeah, it's, it's a little soft. Coxie fooled by the changeup, but able to get bad on ball. 0-2 count still. You're going to have a light party plaza tonight if you bang out all your autographs in a couple innings in the booth. Uh, well, that's the beauty of it is they'll come back around for, for round number two in the plaza. <laughs> They'll forget that I signed it, and I'll sign it again. So, <laughs> got pretty good at picking my signature out in a sea of other players, and I usually just go back over it, <laughs> so it stays in the same spot, and they don't have two of them. This one all the way to the backstop. Wild pitch with a capital W on it as the potential inning-winning run now 90 feet from scoring. Yeah, but that does bring up a good point, Biko. This uh, this stadium, a lot like uh, the one that we played out down there in Daytona, um, it's got a very intimate feel, and it, it really gives us a better chance to have some more one-on-one -on -one moments with fans and some cool conversations. And definitely uh, plaza party stuff like that, you don't turn it into a signature robot. This one into shallow center. Reese Hampton there as Dylan Porter bends but does not break and now barking at Vincent Chapman as he heads back to the first base dugout. And now some words exchanged with Adam Viren. Anybody who thinks that there is some serious competitive fire on banana ball fields, you see one of these games and you will not think that anymore. A little banana illusion of dance going on here. Yeah, not too shabby. I've gotten pretty good at, at this one. We've got a pretty light night on the uh, entertainment side of things. I've got ring dudes, but we don't really have a dugout to do it on top of. Right. So I'm wondering if there's going to be some security guards over there on the back side of our, our dugout that can maybe uh, keep them from from taking over it. Do you guys keep a count of how many things I'm signing up here? I think you've gotten 15. That sounds actually spot on. There you go. 
Speaking of numbers, Josh, I asked you for something before the game today, and I wanted you to compile some data for me. In um, no context, we took a couple guesses. I even brought the man himself, Ryan Cox, into the conversation. I am going to guess final guess, 43. Ryan Cox's final guess, 39. Oh, excellent guesses. Wow. Phenomenal guesses. Now, I feel like you're going to be biased here. Who do you think's closer, you or Coxie? I think I am just because I fit from the sheer amount of trick plays I've seen firsthand with probably the best view in the ballpark. Please welcome um, back to Banana Land. Former Oakland A's star and former Savannah Bananas head coach, Gold Glove Award winner from locally St. Francis High School. Please welcome Eric Burns. <laughs> He's going to be the first ever on field reporter. Actually, on field, Burnsy. Here we go. Hello. Last year in Savannah, and for us to be able to bring it back here to you is a special night for me. We'll have some fun with this in-game broadcasting, but how are you guys enjoying it so far? Love that. That was awesome. Okay, so the grand reveal here, Josh. So, well, did we say what this stat is, it was gathered for? Did you give all the context? Okay, the context was <laughs> Ryan Cox is now currently at Z Soto 101. Correct. He was at 101 trick plays on the tour. Um, he had 100 during my last start in Rancho Cucamonga. And the question I had for Josh was, how many of those trick plays was I on the mound for? And Bryson Bloomer, rude greeting for his 2021 and 22 Coastal Plain League Bananas teammate. Base knock back up the middle for the Party Animals number five hitter. So Ryan Cox guessed 39, you guessed 43. Josh, the number is? In games that Kyle Lewix has pitched in this season, Ryan Cox has a grand total of, now drum roll please. <laughs> Trick plays. I mean, we're all over it. All over it. He's closer than Which me, would account for 39.6% of all of his trick plays on this year's pretty tour. Cool. Got him. How about that? Nolan Daniel gets revenge. And here comes Eric Burns. What happened? Trying to get it back for the boys. A little bit too aggressive. See ya! <laughs> this is incredible. I wasn't sure what moments he was going to capture. Uh, but it kind of feels right, I guess, for him to capture those kind of moments. Real short, sh short, brief, and straight to the point. The amount of times I had sat at home and, and wondered when guys were picked off why that happened. I mean, now we get our answers. This, nice. is, this is truly groundbreaking. Now you know. And great, great job by Bloomer holding his composure. I'm sure he's not too happy about that in the moment, but great job by him still being able to to do an in-game live time oh. interview. <laughs> How about the lackadaisical snag there by Dalton Molden on a ball tattooed his way by Joe Lytle, who is now 0 for 2. He had a one-base sprint his first time. Dalton Molden positioned pretty perfectly, just kind of on the shallow outfield grass on the back of that infield dirt. Caught that one real easy, and he continues to really impress defensively for the Bananas. And how about this? An exciting Party Animals debut for Miles Williams. 15th round draft pick by the Miami Marlins back in 2013. And golly, everyone's okay. Gives the fans a souvenir, sends his bat into the stands. Looks like no one's so, worse for wear. A while ago, they created this stuff that's called Pine Tar. Have you ever uh, heard of it? I it just, it just slipped. Can I put some more? What do I do, Eric? Well, hopefully, uh, go get new bat because that one's gone. Jake, it's a sweet mohawk you got, man. Hey, Burns is taught me how to do this. He won't, he won't lose it. I'm so sorry, young man. All right, what, what put you looking for here? Anything, anything, anything. Think less. Think less and more. This is incredible. Wow. Have you often in times wondered why 
the bat comes out of a batter's hands and, and what they do to prevent it. Yes, and that was a fan's first moment there for uh, Miles Williams giving a fan a, a bat to leave the stadium with tonight. I mean, right off the jump, first swing he takes in a Bananas game, he's looking to donate, make souvenirs for fans. That's fan's first if I've ever seen it. He I saw come, this. Come with a couple uh, extras. I saw this man walk on the bus before we left the hotel to come to the field today, and I was, I was petrified. I don't know where they're finding these people. He is a mountain of a man. He is. And they keep giving him to the party he is, a, he is a mountain. They needed a little bit more power on their side, I guess. Pops oh, this he's going to give another souvenir. Fans can make a play. They do not. Bobbled. And a 2-2 count here on Miles Williams, who, as I was saying, 15th round draft pick by the Marlins in 2013. He was actually grabbed out of high school by the Dodgers in the 42nd round in 2010. And Dalton Malden going to make the call and the catch here. As Nolan Daniel faces the minimum, thanks to the pickoff of Bryson Bloomer. Williams, the kid out of Sonoma County, California, pops out to end the frame. I do not think that's the last time we will see Miles Williams in Banana Land. Guy's got an incredible resume and has spent a whole lot of time playing with a whole lot of nanners. And Jackson Elise, we've got when he was playing for the Jersey Wise guys in 2020, he was playing with Michael Deeb, Dakota McFadden, Kaz Canella, Chris Quitzer, Manny Rosario. And we have two dads, and their job And the reason he just had that debut is because of Skull Hampton, who he was Gastonia Honey Hunters right, teammates with in 2021, as well as Dalton Cornette and a host of Bananas and Party Animals fans who shouted his praises. He's got Dirty Birds experience. He's just about knocked everything off the list you could want. He's played on just about half the teams in the Atlantic League. That's, a, that's incredible. How old is he? As of this day, he is 31 years old. And a week. That's nice. That's July 18th that's really good, quick math. Thank you. Actually doing really, really good. All right, now the lipstick. Don't get cheated, We got some makeovers going on here down on the field. This is beautiful. Yeah. I would like to share a moment like that with you guys. Maybe one night we pick a hotel room. You want to do makeovers? A, yeah, yeah. It's the see how it goes. There's enough makeup in Banana Land. We could do it. I think we could probably get our hands on just, some. Just don't color my hair, and I think we'll be fine. I had a nice little uh, self-treatment day Sunday after the day game, uh, after I pitched. I went to the Cheesecake Factory for the first time, which was a big step for me. I went shopping in the shopping mall right by Cheesecake Factory and uh, even participated in a face mask, which was good to hydrate my skin wow. and also clear out my pores. So I really, really tried to take some time on this on this extended California trip. You look a couple years younger. A three-time national you. champion at the University of Arizona, a three-time gold medalist with USA Softball, and California native Leah Amico. Now batting number one, it's time. Well, how about that? The most legendary softball players in our country's history. Got a couple gold medals around her neck down there at first base. If I had three gold medals, I would wear them all on me at all times. Even to sleep? Yes. Nice. Now that begs the question that I need to ask both you guys as Bill Roy, the bomber, leads it off in the bottom half of the six for the bananas going to take a strike, even it up at one and one. If you guys were to win a gold medal, right? what event would you win it in and why? Wow. Baseball, I think. Although Baseball. I, I kind of want a solo sport so I can be that, the hero. See, that's kind of what I was leaning more yeah. towards whenever I asked the question. Dylan Porter out for his sixth inning of work here. I've got three off the top of my head. I've got immaculate grid. <laughs> Can you win a... This, these are real gold medal Oh, we're events, talking Josh. actual sports. Okay. Yes. Uh, then yes. Cornhole? Okay. Ooh. 
didn't and know you had it like the that. The hyper pitch game at Dave and Buster's. <laughs> Can you win a gold medal in these things, Josh? <laughs> no doubt. An Olympic gold medal right. is what we're looking for. Had a two-run homer to walk off the third his first time. Cranked it out to left this time. Too much launch angle. Jake's goal there to clean it up. Number nine, Noah Burgess. Look, I gave you one. Let me let me have hyper pitch here. Okay, I'm blowing your doors off in hyper pitch. So you can't win a gold medal there. Beautiful first pitch changeup by Dylan Porter to Noah Bridges, who flew out into a trick play by Reese Hampton in center his first time. Well, I'll have you know, Kyle, that I have the hyper pitch record at the Rancho Cucamonga Dave and Buster's with 752 tickets. That's because Rob I didn't step foot in the Dave and Buster's in Rancho Cucamonga. But in Kansas City, I set it at like 103.2. So I don't know what you want to do here. But it sounds like you want to fight. So that's what we're going to do. Take it away, Pico. You can do the play by play. <laughs> you got a baseball game here. One, two now on Bridges. Hmm. I think I, I think I would like to win a gold medal in pole vaulting. Bridges plunked, and the potential inning-winning run is aboard. He's going to look like he was going to do some pitches. Instead, Matt Wolf is going to fireman's carry him to first base. That makes sense. All right. Change up. Change up. Which is like the lamest pitch to hit someone. Yep, yeah, exactly. Boring. <laughs> yeah. Hi. Nice to meet you. Three time gold medalist. What are you, you going to do with all that hardware there? I mean, I'm going to share it with everyone. Oh. Your job right here now is the first base photo. Okay, I'm going to get him to second. Here we go. Here we go. Burnsy was meant for this job. He's had a lot of them in his life. And he's been great, and I'm pretty sure at all of them, he was born for this. Yeah, really good stuff. He's been a second base coach. Um, he's been a pinch runner. He's even pitch hit for the Bananas, but now this is the first time I've ever seen it. Ready? Back! <laughs> this, is, this is something here. He's taking it to a whole nother level. Yeah. Focus on the front knee. Look out for the block move. I hope the little leaguers Absolutely. are watching. Okay. Back. No chance. This is really good knowledge here that you can be learning if you're watching in the stands or at home. Oh, There's a focus. <laughs> you're supposed to follow me. Let's try this again. There goes Noah Bridges. <laughs> How about Woo! hearing Noah on nice. mic telling Bernsey there's only one out there. Yeah. I'm not sure uh, who he's pulling for in this ball game. I'm going to be honest with you. He was Bananas coach last tour. Um, he's got ties to the party animals. I'm not sure who, he's, who he wants to win. I love it. I think we need to bring it to the women. Yes, yes, yes! That's exactly, exactly what we need. Oh, yeah. There goes Noah once again. This one stopped by Chase Acuff. Throw over to first, not in time. D.R. Meadows, two for three on the night. Number seven, Michael Vitamin D. And here comes Bernsey. No, he's just going to celebrate. He's tracking down Noah Bridges again. I think he's going to stay with him, and hopefully if he scores, he can get a breakdown on the run celebration. Got to be careful here, not get in, in the way of Chase Acuff, the party animal shortstop. Michael Deeb at the dish. Two outs, we're going to as soon as the ball's hit, anticipate the swing, read the barrel. I mean, this is coaching fundamentals 101. Jump. Bouncer to first, Porter will cover. And he survives the inning as Burnsy tracks down Noah Bridges. What a 
did Joe Lytle just get Burnsy with? Uh, he went to went to hand him the uh, the bat, and then he dropped it when he went to take it. Classic prank. Yeah, really good stuff. All right, let's pop up into the broadcast booth because it is that magic time in the night as we are literally coming up to the broadcast booth. We are giving away a free pair of hokas. My fiance Lauren's right in front of the camera, so that's great. You can wave to the camera. Yeah, she just got right in front of it. Hey, Joe, uh, we are as close as possible up here. Remember, to get your chance at a free pair of hokas tonight, you need to throw, uh, you need to click the old link in the description of the video, throw in all your contact information, then you put in the buzzword, which is, fellas, drum roll, please. Hang on, before the drum roll. Yes. Josh, did you put deodorant on today because you smell kind of bad? <laughs> yes, Drum I roll. <laughs> two Hoka's Tuesday. Two Hoka's Tuesday? We're oh, giving away goodness. two Hoka's today. Not just two one. Hoka's? Not just one, Josh. It's more than one. That's right. How many is it? Two Hoka's. And is that spaces or no spaces? There are spaces. There are spaces okay, between. Okay, it is T-W-O space H-O-K-A space T-U-E-S-D-A-Y. Two Hoka Tuesday. Right. Two, two Hoka. Hoka Tuesday! That's really nice! Thank you. Really good work there, Kyle. Thank that's you, a, buddy. That's a good... That's good stuff. How about this? We got Matt Wolf coming in for Nolan Daniel, who throws a scoreless inning of relief. And now we get the trick pitching extraordinaire pride of Joy Oklahoma, who now resides in Oklahoma City, where he is a firefighter. Yeah, and the last time we saw Matt Wolf out on the mound, it might have been the most electric single half inning in banana ball history. Matt Wolf with trick pitches galore, a strikeout, and we saw a barehanded catch by Michael Deep in left field with DR Meadows ripping a back flip to end the inning for Matt Wolf in Durham. We'll see what that, what Matt Wolf's got out of his bag of tricks tonight. That. It kind of hurt me to hear that sentence come out of your mouth. But I, I, I share your testaments, Josh. I definitely do. Thank I am you, Matt Wolf's probably biggest fan behind his wife and his daughter, Braley and Megan, um, who I Not saw. Not order. Reverse. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Wife, wife Megan. Yes. Daughter Rayleigh. And I saw them. Thank you for clarifying <laughs> Just so that. so people don't get confused yeah. here. I saw them uh, on their way to the zoo, actually, which is by our hotel this morning before I went to breakfast, and Matt Wolf in the one-two count is gonna to go to the cartwheel. And between the legs, misses the outside corner. Two-two count on Dustin Baber. It's the bottom of the order for the party animals. Eight, nine, and 10. Babes one for two on the night. RBI single, ended up winning the second inning. Heater gets the outside corner for strike three. Baber not a huge fan of the call. talented baseball player in the entire world. Can we give it up for Matt Wolf, ladies and gentlemen? First day I saw this guy at tryouts. Uh, it was the most insane thing I've ever seen in my entire life. What you doing, buddy? Oh, this is good. Okay. Trust me. <laughs> Should we try again or not? Good scoop there from Mr. Leroy. Third time, Trump. Okay. What are you doing? We got. What you got? You got some oil? Yeah, I know what bridge is. I bumped, chest bumped him, and I still have the oil from the way off that he had earlier. Just get a feel. That's a legal. That's a legal. Good luck. 2 0 pitch. And a 3 0 count now on Jason Swan, who has struck out and flown out tonight. That one gets the bottom of the zone. Wolf getting tricky for the 3-1, 360, bender down and out. And Swan will grab his 22nd sprint on the tour compared to 24 strikeouts. An insanely valuable man to have in your nine hole. Hours and hours of work to perfect that, by the way. A really good, really good spot for Bernsey to be in with Matt Wolf having the barrel out there. He's got, he's got the best seat in the house. A little protection. Yeah. Chase Acuff 
And with the base knock into left center, cleaned up by the doctor. And wow, great base running by Aka. A single or a double there? It feels like it might be a double. He never stopped. No. Can't punish him for the throw going into the wrong base. So Chase has his 14th double on the tour. And now two men in scoring position for the dangerous Reese Hampton, who cashes in. Swanee scores easily, Acuff on his heels. They are struggling with the ball. Hampton scampering towards second. And he's out. Pure pandemonium here in the top of the seventh, but the party animals have two runs. He was out, sir. <laughs> Good, Reggie. Your, thought, your, your thoughts. I'll t I never tag, but I'll get off the field. I'll get, I'll get. Those batting ones are sick, and you got two stakes. Ooh, challenge. Challenge hat. The party animals have challenged the call. Tag. Shot. I have a feeling Burnsy is going to give his commentary on this challenge. Zach Frangelo, Vincent Chapman have the headsets on. And let's get our replay. Yeah, we're ready to rumble, Zach. Okay, throw coming from DR. You cannot tell anything there. We're getting... S he did look pretty safe to me, I gotta be honest. I... I... I think he's... I think he's safe. I don't think he ever got tagged. I'm not sure the hand comes off the base either. No. Yep, I'm ready to overturn it, Zach. I think that's all we're getting. Yep, good job, party animals. You know, we can't take all day on these things. I'm not sure what... We've already taken off the Riedel headsets. I don't know why Vincent and Zach are still looking at stuff. We're not getting another replay. I was pretty sure this was overturned. I guess I got to put the Riedel headset back on. I think they're doing some work without you guys. Yeah, I'm, I'm safe. Overturn it. I don't know what the holdup was, but it is overturned. The ruling on the field is... Runner is safe at second base. It's always helpful when you have Burnsy getting Reese Hampton telling us that he was never tagged. And now Burnsy patiently waits. Well, the party animals boogie on second base on what is a single and an E8. And here, come, here comes Eric Burns. He's just going to dab up Reese. Wild pitch from Wolf. Hampton has third. He's barreling home. Flip from Leroy. He's out. So one pitch later, Hampton is taken off the base pads. Dalton Cornett steals first base for the second time on this tour. And there are two outs. We got him. Matt, got you something out, man. Hey, he ain't nothing. Very insightful. He's a man of, man of few words. <laughs> he doesn't speak a whole lot. Appreciate what Reese was trying to do there. Ends up being victim of a 2-1 put out. There's more churros being slung in front of the broadcast. Those things look good, man. I think I'm gonna up my review to 9.8. Oh, you're still go you're still climbing? I'm just looking at him, man. Mm. I'm looking at him. Mm -hmm. I think it's the size that gets an extra point two here from me. Mm. I've never seen churros close to this large. Wow. Kyle's munching on him again. 
I didn't know Josh was hoarding him over here. Please, I know you're not much of a snacker, but <laughs> I thought you'd finish it by now. Me and Biko are the slow eaters. Look, I'm trying to I'm trying to squash that beef a little bit. I'm I'm offering a, a peace offering. This it's gonna is gonna nice take a churro. lot more than a churro to get us past what we're dealing with right now. Salted molded grabs his 27th trick play in 29 tries. Here's Eric Burns. Can we get a quick line, a lyric, somehow you don't know? Uh, yeah. Miss you, love you, thank you, love you. All right. Give it up for Eric Burns, everybody! I think that's a keeper right there. I liked it. I like it. I like Burnsy getting loose down there. Okay, we will be back in the booth with Cowboy Kyle Lewigs after we have a blindfolded pillow fight. Young professor, take it away, buddy. We're gonna spin them around and they're gonna start swinging for the win. You're gonna have to pick who the winner is, the best pillow fighter of them all. I've got Quentin, Xavier, Max, and Jack. Fellas, let's, let's put the blindfolds on, and we're gonna spin it out, and you swing it. Here we go. In three, two, one, spin. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Fight! Here we go. Swing! Oh, they are off to the races. They have no idea where they are. They are going hard, swinging very, very hard. I need to watch where I am in the middle of this. Oh, oh my, my goodness. goodness! They all oh, face oh, shot. That's the jacket's tag. Oh my goodness! Here they go. The spin move has to fly in five, four, three, two, one. Stop! Oh my goodness! Stop! Oh. Man, I don't know who the winner is, but I think I know who the loser is. <laughs> All right, <laughs> let's see how, bring it over here, guys. We're gonna have the fans vote. How did it feel about Max, everybody? How did it feel about Quentin? How did it feel about Xavier? And what about Jack, everybody? Jack, you took a heck of a beating to your the winner here. I give it up for the block vote, pull up by the champion. Well, the blindfold pillow fight, a favorite of mine here on the 23 World Tour. Yeah, never disappoints. And those guys went all out. It was good to see. There might, there might have been a couple fists that landed on faces <laughs> instead of pillows. Manners need two runs to tie the inning, three to win it here in the seventh. It's 3-4-5, Danny Oberst, Eric Jones Jr., and Dakota McFadden due to swing it. Nico Scala with Josh Cholewski and Cowboy Kyle Lewigs in the booth. So happy to have you watching here on a beautiful Tuesday night out of Excite Ballpark in San Jose, California. This place has been here for 80 years, built in 1942. Sixth oldest ballpark still in use in minor league baseball. Do you know the oldest, Kyle? I know Josh does. I know Josh does too. This is the fifth oldest, you say? Sixth. Six. And you're, you're, you're searching for the oldest. I want the oldest still in operation in minor league baseball. But what if the minor league team doesn't play there anymore? Does that still count? It does not count. There's a reason you should know it. Because we played at it, I'm assuming. Correct. It's a big hint. Yeah, I know. I'm getting mad. But, <laughs> like... Classic Kyle, it, taking too long to figure it out. Josh, <laughs> can we, how do we mute his mic? We'll see if you can figure it out. Dan Obers works a sprint. We'll see if he tests the defense. The sixth and now seventh man to touch the ball was Jake Skull. He couldn't handle it cleanly. So Danny, with a fascinating night, one for one with a single. His fifth steal of first base on the tour, tied with D-Mac to lead it. And now a two base sprint. Yeah, and that is Dan's first ball four sprint in July, believe it or not. And this is after he had eight throughout all of June. So nice to see Dan Obers back in that ball four sprint department. Banana ball. It's fascinating. Kyle is still stumped as Jake Lealios brings Acuff, Baber, and Hampton in for a little choreographed dance for what will be a 1-0 offering to the tour leader in homers, Eric Jones Jr. with 11 long balls. Former Seattle Mariners and Minnesota Twins minor leaguer. 
awaits the pitch. This is a full story here. Wow. <laughs> and the ball popped towards the stands. Not caught. That was a phenomenal dance. It's the most leg movement I've seen on the tour. Nine out of ten for me. That was really good. Um, yeah, it's amazing. Man, I don't, I don't know. It's not Rickwood because they don't play there anymore. It's right. not the Durham Bulls because they're not at the old stadium anymore. Right. Um, boy, you're gonna kick yourself. Boy, oh boy, are you just gonna be furious? Dane Oberst taking off for third. This one blasted to dead center. Hampton underneath it. And it's off the wall. He was deking Oberst. Who will now cut the party animal's lead in half as he does indeed score. And EJ on second base represents the possible inning tying run. Yeah, that was a very interesting play, and it almost worked at keeping Dan Oberst there at third base. But Dan, really smart, saw that ball clang off the wall after already running on that pitch, was able to come around and score a run here for the Bananas and cut that party and was lead in the seventh and half. EJ grabs his 11th double and ties Tanner Thomas for the tour lead in RBIs at 43 apiece. Guys, I want to talk, but I can't talk about anything until I get past this, and I don't, I don't think I know what it is. It is Jackie Robinson Ballpark in Daytona Beach, Florida, where you have been a part of four banana ball games now, going back to the two you played on last year's tour. I'm not too upset about that, man. We've played at a lot of ballparks at this point. This is true. And yeah, yeah, I probably should have got that one. 1914 it was built. That checks out. About to celebrate its 110th anniversary, Dakota McFadden steals first base for the second time tonight. And he leapfrogs Dan Oberst in the steal of first base department. He has now six on the tour. They're playing leapfrog. <laughs> it really speaks to what Eric Burns was talking about earlier tonight. Good banana ball feel from Dakota McFadden, seeing two pitches get away and instinctively knowing to go ahead and take first base there and get the bananas base runners and he passes the baton to the man he shares the tour lead in walk-offs with D-Mac and Danny Hosley with 20 walk-offs each in fact I almost said Danny has 21 no he had an RBI double that tied right over our heads Biko I thought that was coming I thought that was your chance I'm waiting for it waiting this on is my a, moment. this is not Definitely furthest from the worst spot you've been in Correct. to catch a foul ball. This is probably one of the better ones. This is yes. the most optimum place we've had all tour. Great now, stop by Joe Lytle. It got me thinking as we still have no outs. Bananas are going to pick up a big inning to tie it up going into the top of the eighth. Would be massive for the game to hopefully capture the massive state of California. Right. Uh, which the Bananas are one game away from after sweeping Rancho Cucamonga. And the 2-1 pitch misses outside. We have the first oldest ballpark. We have the sixth oldest ballpark. Can you do two through five? No. I know one of them's in Asheville, North Carolina. This ball blasted to right center. And Tanner Thomas is tracking it down. Malachi scores the inning tying run. Dakota McFadden hoffing it around third. Bananas have won the seventh inning, three runs to two. They tie the game at two points each. Danny Hosley with his tour leading 21st walk off on the season. And how about this for Danny Hosley? Seven of his 10 hits here in the month of July have gone for extra bases. We're talking five doubles, a triple, and a home run. Danny Hosley has been on another level for the Bananas here in July and continues to swing a hot stick. Goodness gracious, that's the most I've ever seen D-Mac run in one consecutive event. How about that? Stealing first and then scoring from first. Boys, I will have to bid you adieu as the eighth inning is coming amongst us. Um, I hope all of those out there 
who gets to win a Hoka will hopefully win one. Again, the buzzword is two Hoka Tuesdays with spaces. Right, and it has just ended. It just ended, yeah, so yeah. I hope the winners win. Light sheet race um, time, Kyle. Thank you so much, my dear friend, but this has to take precedent. Lavender up in front, Teal just behind him here in Teal City. Black in the rear. Gray has stumbled and is out of the race. It's between Teal and Lavender. Black still has a puncher's chance. Teal and Lavender, neck and neck coming down the stretch. It is Teal by a hair in San Jose as the sheet race winner. Kyle, it's been a blast, my dear friend. That was beautiful, Pico. That was Boy, incredible. it must feel good to be back, huh, buddy? I live for the sheet race. Game is tied 2-2. The Bananas are looking to take away the state of California in just four games. It was so much fun. DJ the Invader is on the mound to take over the eighth. Pico is a blast. Churros are amazing. Josh, I hope you stub your toe. <laughs> Kyle, beef aside, go body that uh, ring dude's performance. Way to be the bigger man there, Josh. Things I'm learning out west, you know. <laughs> We'll see, I came to California, just a mere boy. <laughs> I leave a, a mountain of a man. Couldn't have said it any better myself. We'll see Cowboy Kyle again in Fresno and see if tensions have cooled between the two of you. DJ the Invader, fourth banana to pitch tonight. Takes the ball from Matty Wolf. See what he's done in 46 and a third innings on this season. Started incredibly, had a rough middle stretch on the tour, and has been back to nearly dominant ways as of late. Five of his eight completed innings since the month of June have been three minutes or shorter for DJ the Invader. A big part of the reason you see that three minute and 50 second average MPI for him, lowest among all qualified bananas and fifth best on the tour. That ball spanked by Jake Skoll into center, diving catch, D.R. Meadows. Back-to-back -back laser beams off the bat of the 2010 first round pick. And he has line outs to left and center field to show for it. He's 0 for 4 on the night. And what a great jump for DR Meadows. A big first out for DJ the Invader. And when you look at Meadows, a little bit shaky defensively, a trick play missed, and an error tonight. That catch basically makes up for all of that. It's the meat of the order for the party animals here in the top of the eighth. 12 and a half minutes on our clock. A pinch left. Four, five, and six here. Skull, Bloomer, and Lytle. Bryson one for three on the night. Singled his last time. Peter gets the low outside corner. Vader throws four seam, two seam, and cut fastballs, a slider, and his best pitch, the changeup. See what he does here on two and two. Looks like the change, and it's bounce foul. Another two, two. Check swing. Did he go? Reggie Liggins down the first baseline says yes. Bloomer punched out for the second time tonight. Two down. Yeah, that was much to the dismay of Bryson Bloomer. Thought that he had held up his swing there. And man, a tough night for Bloomer, especially considering you have to get picked off earlier in the ballgame than interviewed by Bernsey about it. Insult to injury. The downside of our new on-field reporter. Upside for us, just a downside for Bloomer. 1-1 one, one count now on Joe Lytle, who fouls that off himself, as if he doesn't get battered enough behind the dish. 0 for 2 on the night. He's flown out and lined out. Had a one-base sprint, stolen base, and scored the inning-winning run in the second for the Party Animals. And has a streak of four straight starts with at least one RBI on the line tonight. We'll see if Joe can find a way, maybe a solo homer, to extend that. Gonna have to do it from behind in the count. 
DJ the Invader looking for another quick frame. Right at the three minute mark, he fires home. And <laughs> nearly clinks Joe Lytle on the keister. 2-2 two -two coming now with two down. Ball foul, does not look like a fan will have a chance on it. They don't. Another 2-2 from the Invader. Not going to be a home run, but it is going to dunk down in between Malden and Bridges for a two-out single. Lytle one for three, on base for the second time tonight. Big reason why he's been moved up into the six hole, as great as it is to have him towards the bottom of the lineup hitting above 300. You want to maximize the plate appearances for a guy hitting 312 with a 375 on base percentage and 815 OPS. That's right, and we saw Joe bat 429 across the three games in Rancho. He had two starts, but in those starts, two doubles, three runs batted in. Miles Williams gets his second career Party Animals plate appearance. Checks his swing. Reggie Liggins says he did not go. Williams popped out to second base his first time. This one lifted into shallow left center. D.R. Meadows makes the call and the catch. And the invader continues his strong back end of the tour here. Nanners just need one run in the bottom of the eighth to take their first lead in points tonight. Sing together, but first I want you to pull out your phones, turn on your flashlights. Every single person here, get Jesse your phone Cole and your flashlight on. And leading 4,000 plus here, here in Excite Ballpark yellow. in yellow. And how extra beautiful it is when we get to turn the lights off. In our 22nd stop on this tour, the 29th city to ever get Banana Ball. Josh and I get to be a part of Yellow for the first time. In my 94th ever Banana Ball game that I've been blessed to broadcast, it was worth the wait to get to be a part of this. have taken the first three games here in California and will win the state if they can get the victory tonight. Jesse, how much have you been loving this trip to California, my dear friend? We, we love, love you so, so much, much Banana Nation. Now yeah, let's go, go Bananas! Bananas! That's what I thought. The guy's been having a blast. Really so special to get to bring our young sport to the West Coast for the first time ever. Manners with a 6-5 to five victory in round two of showdowns on Friday night. A 4-3 to three win as the away team on Saturday after Jake Skull took down Danny Oberst. Nine homers to eight in the pregame home run derby. And then a 4-3 to three win on Sunday afternoon. With Dakota McFadden lasting a double to tie the game in the bottom of the ninth inning, and then Eric Jones Jr. working a sprint to win it. Zach Blankenship, the new man on the mound for the bad boys of Banana Land. One of the two newest additions to this Party Animals bullpen and the savvy Southpaw has been very solid in his limited sample size thus far. 
Yeah, we saw him work two innings in his last game. This was Rancho game two, but he did come away with the loss. He allowed one earned run in that span, two hit by pitches and a sprint. It was really some control that ended up being the thing that bit Zach Blankenship in the end. He has 7-8-9 for the Nanners. Ryan Cox, Bill Leroy, and Noah Bridges due to swing it. With Dalton Malden waiting in the pit. And Coxie. Now one for two on the night. A two-base sprint and a run scored back in the third. A fly out. And he represents the potential inning-winning run. No slouch on the bag. Seven for seven in his stolen base attempts. And like a lot of players, a la Dakota McFadden, I mean, Ryan Cox, one of those guys who is a savvy base runner. He takes the bases when he knows that it's best. In this situation, especially late game, this is when Tyler Gillum likes to get aggressive, especially with those sneaky base runners, try and get them some of those stolen bases and runners in scoring position to get those walk-offs. Bill Leroy, a two-run homer that brought in Ryan Cox to win the third inning. It was his ninth walk off of the tour. Hit a towering fly ball to left in the sixth inning. Bananas catcher in his sixth year in Banana Land. Four collegiately, part of that 2021 Pettit Cup championship team. Now in year two as a pro. And a 2-2 count. Lincolnship with a fastball, high 80s, low 90s. Mostly throws two seam sinkers. And adds a curveball, a changeup, and a splitter to round out the arsenal. 2-2. Two -two. That one driven deep out to left field. Bill Leroy. Oh, bounces off the wall. But Coxley barreling around third. Bill has done it again. His second walk off of the ball game. And the name Three points to two going into the ninth inning. What a big game for Bill Leroy tonight. A guy batting below the Mendoza line here in July, but two big extra base hits, and now the Bananas up one point with a chance to win the state of California here in the top of the ninth. Here comes the young professor. Ladies and gentlemen, after walking off the eighth inning, it is time to cast your gaze upon the scoreboard. As it sits right now at the top of the ninth, it is three to two, Savannah Bananas. But here's the thing about the final inning in the game of Banana Ball. In the final inning, every run counts. That means that any ball that is scored on will count as a point for the final total. However, all the Bananas need right now is three outs to win the whole thing here in San Jose. So make some noise, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the final inning! The young professor does not lie. Every run that is scored here in the ninth inning will count as a point. As you get another look at the swing that gave the Nanners their first lead in the all-important points category tonight. Jake Skull couldn't quite track it down. Ryan Cox had an immaculate jump on it. Read it perfectly off the bat. And scores from first. As the Nanners have won the third, the seventh, and the eighth inning to overcome the 2-0 deficit that was built up by first and second inning victories from the party animals. Now Matt Malatesta in his third year as a banana. Through three scoreless innings to Bill Leroy in the decisive game three of that 2021 Coastal Plain League Championship. And now in his second professional campaign, the splitter specialist, after struggling early, has been superb. I mean, he has really come into his own for the banana since the month of May. Phenomenal MBIs and a low ERA. We're talking a 1.59 ERA just in the month of July alone. And this is the guy who was the closer for the bananas during last year's World Tour and the Summer Series. So with Danny Hosley just a little tired after working a lot in Rancho Cucamonga, Matt Malatesta, the next man up for the Bananas. One for two on the season as well in save opportunities. Bottom of the order for the party animals. 
eight, nine, and 10. Dustin Baber, Jason Swan, and Chase Acuff. The pride of Brant Beach, New Jersey on the bump, a splitter specialist. We'll work in a two-seam fastball, slider, and forkball from time to time, but he lives on the split fastball. Speaking of a split, <laughs> our mascot split. Some really unique work out there, and there is the devastating splitter from Malatesta, heading the count one and two on Baber. Count now two and two. Full count on the Nanner's second baseman, who's one for three with an RBI single. And that won the second inning. And we'll see if Matt Malatesta decides to go against the splitter and just go fastball to get the strike here on Baber. But no, continues to stick with that pitch that he is so very confident in. He's so gosh darn good at throwing it. And when it's right, it looks like a strike all the way in until the last second, which is why you saw Dustin Baber fighting it off on the payoff. Another one, that one an easy take. And the potential game tying point is aboard. Dustin Baber getting a high five from Jason Swan as he comes around first. Not going to test the Nanner sprint defense. They get it through all seven fielders behind the pitcher and catcher awful quickly. And Baber is aboard. Now Jason Swan represents the potential go-ahead. Yeah, you saw good hustle from Dustin Baber immediately out of the box there, but the banana sprint defense so good. Baber deciding to play it very wise and just stick there at first base and give the party animals a base runner right now rather than run into a possible out there at second base. Swan, he struck out and flew out against Ryan Kellogg. He worked a one-base sprint against Matt Wolf. And quickly behind, no balls and two strikes. The party animals fighting for their lives here in the Golden State. They lost all three games in Rancho Cucamonga. And with a game tonight in San Jose, Thursday night in Fresno, and Saturday in Sacramento. They need to win all three, or they will seed the nation's number one state in population and third state in geographical size. Second largest on the tour. Party animals have already taken Texas. This one popped to the right side. Eric Jones Jr. makes the call in the snag for out number one as Jason Swan slams his bat down in frustration. Yeah, Jason Swan has not had Matt Malatesta's number this season. He is now 0 for 10 against the splitter specialist. And good job by Eric Jones as well. You saw both him and Dalton Malden in hot pursuit of that little looper. And it was EJ wisely calling out Dalton Malden, making sure that out was secured. Splitter is below the knees. Malatesta and Aka, 2021 Bananas teammates, although they, they did not play on the team at the same time. Aka, shortstop for the Nanners during the first half. Matt Wolf was bullpen reinforcements in the final two weeks of the season. Boy, did it become important in the biggest game of the season. Aka. In his first tour as a party animal, has been a stalwart at short, one for two on the night. Double hit by pitch, a stolen base and a run scored. Two one count now as Reese Hampton and the deadly top of the order for the party animals waits on deck. Three one count. Wow! Acuff trying to do damage, three and one chases, and now the count is full. Really surprising swing there from Chase Acuff. A pretty disciplined hitter, mind you. Not a guy who's going to chase a lot of pitches like that. And now he's got a battle here with 3-2, protecting anything close like he just did there with Malatesta. That's the power of the splitter. It looks so good until it isn't. And Aka, 2018, hardest man to strike out in Division II baseball when he was at Eckerd College. He has 15 ball four sprints compared to just 17 Ks on this tour. Another 3-2. He barrels that to left center. Michael Deeb tracks it down. 
The Bananas one out away from winning California. And it's going to be the best hitter on the tour. Their center fielder, Reese Hampton. And Reese Hampton putting the arms up, trying to get the fans up and into a party animals rally here. By the way, Michael Deeb with a stellar jump there on that ball off the bat of Chase Acup. Just when you thought it was going to continue to tail away from the Bananas left fielder, he's able to swoop in and make a nice grab. Now two outs, the Bananas an out away from taking California. Hampton two for four on the night. A two-run double in the seventh. Check that, two-run single. Got to second on an error. Faber racing for second base. He'll get there on the wild pitch. 2-0 count on the tour leader in batting average at 384. On base percentage at 455. OPS at 1109. His 19 doubles pace all hitters, his nine home runs, the most on the party animals. And if throwing strikes weren't already imperative, they're even more so now after Dustin Baber reaches second base on that wild pitch from Malatesta, which means in the event of two more balls, Dustin Baber, he's going to be able to come around and score that game-tying point for the party animals. Generous call there on 2-0. But now the count three and one, and Malatesta one ball away from tying this game. Hampton as patient a man at the plate as you can find. Three one, fouled off. And he ended up swinging at what looked like it was gonna be ball four. And again, I think it's just what you said earlier, the power of the Matt Malatesta splitter, a pitch that looks really good coming in and can get some big swings and misses from the party animals. Even from a guy who spent three years in the Tigers minor league system, Matt Malatesta gets him swinging. And the Bananas win San Jose three runs to two and win California four games to nothing. Unbelievable performance from the Nanners here in the Golden State as they are now 34 and 25, 25 and 22 against the Party Animals, the three game advantage, the largest for them on the tour. Boy, you talk about a gutsy pitch there from Matt Malatesta going to that outside corner with something just a little off speed there to Reese Hampton. And as patient as Reese was trying to be to make sure that he can make contact with that ball, comes up empty in the end. Again, bananas with a huge win in the state of California, it's there. Here's Bill Leroy to celebrate. Get those hands together one last time. Coming to the mound to celebrate a Bananas win. Myself, Bill Leroy. Yes, sir. Up next, we have our wonderful coaches, Coach Adam Byron and Coach Tyler Gillum. And of course, our entertainer's fastest man in the ball, Flash the Kid Mitchell. Now coming to the mound, catches the barrel tonight, number three, Eric Jones. You know, you know, call him maybe Savannah Bananas, Hart Rob, number nine, Noah Bridges. The slugger coming up with the legend, Reginald Horn, Mr. The YMCA man, number 18, hitting a double tonight, Mr. Danny Hosley. Meeting in the trap, our trick shortstop, living up to his name, number six, Mr. Ryan Cox. Call him if you need help, he's a doctor, holding down center field, number five.
coming up, singing his own song. Miss you, love you. Check it out on Spotify. in California have been an absolute blast. What a journey tonight was in the Valley of the Heart's Delight, San Jose, right here in the Golden State. The Nanners did not lead this game until the eighth inning on that walk off there from Danny Hosley. And then they take it home with Matt Malatesta getting that huge strikeout of Chase Acuff to seal it. Check that, Reese Hampton. I mean, it's pretty surprising the way the Bananas were coming back in this game. It really felt like the party animals had control of this game early. Good offense against Ryan Kellogg and a good job cashing in on some of the defensive miscues by the Bananas as well. And then Matt Wolf kind of having a less than stellar inning for him, but the Bananas bouncing back in a big way once Jake Lealios came into this game and continued that rally against Zach Blankenship as well. And man, how about Bill Arroy in San Jose having the biggest game of his tour this season? A double and a walk-off home run for Bill. And the double, also a walk-off. So he goes from 8 to 10, just like that in one fell swoop here in Excite Ballpark. And then, of course, you, you graced upon it. But Ryan Kellogg, Five innings, seven strikeouts, gives up three runs, only one of them earned. Boy, he was magnificent in his second start for the Nanners. And we've kind of seen that with a lot of the banana starters here in California is a lot of runs allowed, but not many earned. We've just seen a little bit of some sloppy defense, mostly in the errors department for the bananas. Chad Reese trying to herd the great fans here of San Jose away from our camera. Yes, appreciate it. Thank you all very much. Good work by our coordinating producer there. Yeah, and then it goes to Nolan Daniel, who gets a roundabout wave, a one, two, three inning, thanks to picking off Bryson Bloomer after he started it with a single. Matt Wolf runs into some trouble. I wouldn't doubt it. He was distracted a little bit by the presence of an 11-year Major League Baseball veteran right behind him on the mound, and Eric Burns. He gives up a couple runs, but the Nanners score three he runs there in the seventh. That is the real turning point of the game when they tie it at two points apiece. They had been trailing since the end of the first inning when the party animals won that one to nothing. And then all of a sudden you have the Danny Hosley walk off in the eighth to give them the 3-2 lead and Malatesta nails it down. And really that seventh inning, you feel a lot of momentum in your favor offensively. A big part of why the Bananas were able to send just two batters up to the plate against Zach Blankenship and walk that inning off. 
And boy, we've said it quite a few times to this point. The Bananas bullpen is really rounding into form outside of Matt Wolf. Terrific work from Nolan Daniel, DJ the Invader, and Matt Malatesta, especially Malatesta stepping up in a big way in that safe situation. Something that he's had to cede to Danny Hosley, but when he gets his opportunities, he's as good as always. Could not agree more. Thank you so much to everybody who spent time on your Tuesday to watch some banana ball, and you will be blessed with a chance at not just one, but two pairs of hookahs! That's a fact. On Thursday night in Fresno, we will be back to giving away one pair of hokas in the seventh inning. But tonight, since it is Tuesday, we will be giving away not just one, but two pairs of hokas! Spot on. Okay, I think I've pushed you enough, Mr. Tolevsky. Excellent job, as always. Drum roll, please, for our first winner. <laughs> Cheryl Austin, Cheryl Austin, congratulations on your free pair of hokas and our second winner, drum roll please. <laughs> Megan Ord, Megan Ord, congratulations on your free pair of hokas. That is Cheryl Austin and Megan Ord. You will be reached out to by Melicent Bean Supreme, our hokas queen, and you will get the goods. Thank you so much again for watching tonight from this amazing 3-2 win in San Jose, California for the Nanner. We'll be giving away not two, but one pair of hokas. Correct. On Thursday night in Fresno, where we will be live once again at 6.30 p.m. Pacific time for the pregame and 7 p.m. Pacific will be first pitch. Before we shut this thing down, we must shout out the cast and crew that made this whole thing possible. As always, it starts in Savannah, where they are three hours ahead of us and doing an, incre an incredible job as the clock approaches 11.15 p.m. Eastern. Our director, Ben Powell. Great work tonight, Ben, and working cohesively with you, Griffin Ellis, our technical director, pressing all the right buttons, the brains of the technical operation. Griffin, you're a superstar, and you know it. On audio, one name, you know him, you love him. It is Kwanzi on the ones and the twos. The scorebook was dominated by Michael Basista. The graphics were run by Julia Massey. Thank you so much. And our statistics were done by Mikey O'Connor. You are all incredible. Thank you so much for the three-headed monster that you are. Just absolutely manhandling and woman handling all graphics possible on the replay. Keegan Woods nailing it on our two challenges tonight. We had an upstand and we had an overturn. That is thanks to you, Keegan, getting us the right shots at the right speed here in San Jose in the Golden State. On the first base camera, it was Taylor. Check that. Emerson Elmgren, the Iron Horse of BTV, across the diamond from Emerson. It was Taylor Finneran. What a dynamic duo they are. On the high home camera, just absolutely getting blasted by sun all night long until it descended below the mountains. It is Clayton Franklin. Incredible work, Clayton. On the wireless camera, Henry Campbell, you are a superstar, my dear friend. On the, uh, let's see, moderators in the chat. That's where we are. No, my high horse. High first cameraman, Chris Haynes. Golly, figure it out, Biko. Chris, your superstar, a Swiss Army knife of BTV. Our moderators in the chat, Scott Thompson and Colbyte underscore. Thank you for so much that you do in that magical world that is the YouTube chat. Our video legend, Chris Sachi, dicing up our co-showman melt for Ryan Cox and Dakota McFadden. Our YouTube king, Mr. Zach Bro. Zachadias Bro, our king of Louisiana. And, of course, our Zappos NK Club queen, Melly B a.k.a. Mellicent Beans Supreme. It takes an army to make it happen, and boy, oh boy, do they all do an incredible job. That goes to you as well, Josh Tolevsky, on the color commentary and the statistical savantness. Biko Scala, you're my San Jose hero. Thank you. That, is, that actually just made my entire night. Thank you so much to Eric Burns and Kyle Lewis for joining us in the broadcast booth, and thank you to Jared Orton, Carrie, Emily, and Jesse Cole, the executive producers of BTV, for allowing us to have so much gosh darn fun. I am Biko Scala saying so long for Chad Reese, the coordinating producer of BTV, the straw that stirs the drink and the brains behind the operation who made this first ever banana ball broadcast in the stands happen. Chad, you are the best in the business. We will catch you on Thursday night in Fresno. As I mentioned, 6.30 p.m. for the pregame show. That's Pacific time, and it will be 7 p.m. Pacific for first pitch. Nanners win it 3-2 to two in a thriller. They're up three games on the party animals for the first time on this tour. They have won the great state of California and look to add insult to injury on Thursday night. We will see you there. And of course, we'll see you later!